thing. It's a good one. It's a good one. Hi guys, I am Adara. Welcome to How to Trade. Uh, this is Obi, and we are here on uh, this one. I just realized I do not have my chat open, so I'm going to deal with that in a moment here. Uh, hopefully, everyone had a great weekend. How was your long weekend, Obi? It was all right. A little, uh, a little uneventful. A little bit of family time, but uh, nothing too crazy. Rest, rested up. Uh, nice little uh, rest and relaxation. A little long weekend. How about yours? Awesome. Yeah, mine was pretty good. I am uh, probably like. Slept a little too much, but uh, you know, it's all good. Got a little bit of productivity, saw a couple people, so trying to mix everything up here. Also, uh, we already have a super chat here. Uh, Chase Bands, thank you so much for the $2 super chat. Thank you, thank you, you guys are great. April Fools, you guys are the best. Good morning. So, um, <laughs> really funny one there. Much appreciated there. Chase Bands, hopefully, you are uh, chasing these bands. Shout out to Andrew Chow. I'm going to try to do Sharif's roll call. Or Shreve, um, I know Sean does a roll call as well. We're going to see if we can do this. Darwin saying hola. Sebastian saying hola. Adam Deleuze. Aaron um, and Joanna Brewster. Sorry, just Joanna Brewster there. Uh, the Amazonian prince said scrambled eggs on toast. So I'm guessing that one goes out to our pal Obi. Um, Adobe says hope and victory. Hi, Elon. Um, welcome to the chat, everyone. I just realized as I got in here, uh, NVIDIA falling a little bit, so I'm probably going to have to get out NVIDIA in a moment here. Um, yeah, yeah, Frank Boso, I, I was not prepared for the, um, the chat management to happen here, so all good. Hello, uh, Fat Figa. Hello, um, Bears versus Bulls saying, let's go, Darren. Obi, hello, Ponzi Fonzi. Everyone's kind of trickling in there, so that was my attempt at the roll call. Uh, but we are going to be talking a lesson, but for now, um, any trades that you got into this morning that you... Trying to talk about here, anything anything worth noting, anything you have your eye on as we head into yeah. the day hour? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm currently in uh, in a couple of positions here in Google and uh, both uh, Intel. Um, Intel was nice off the open, so was Google. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to talk about those. I just got to get my chat up here. Uh, a little, uh, little buggy, but uh, yeah, I was looking at looking at some of those uh, some of those names. We can see how strong. Um, the, the market was off the open. Let me get the right contract here. This is still on an older contract. Some of these futures, I'm like, the futures are definitely not doing this today. Um, all right, so let me get the let me get the right contract up there. HM, yeah, it should be the M contract. That should be correct. Um, but uh, yeah, no, um, nothing too crazy other than that. We saw chips kind of kind of go crazy off the open, so there there might have been some opportunities in there. But uh, yeah, the NQ and the ES both kind of pushing towards their lows. The ES very very a uh, uh, little bit more distinct, very distinct in terms of a difference from the ES and the NQ. You can see that it's traveled much much further than some of this uh, pre market uh, pre market lows that we had going off into the open there. So uh, softy as well, a little sideways. Um, um, I was looking at uh, Google L. Let me just pull that one up right here. That one here. flew in the open. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. It was going a little crazy there. I was like, I, I went a little crazy as well. I want, like, I saw the drive, and I'm like, huh. Let's see. Let's wait for it to kind of slow down there. So I got involved, uh, 55 halves, uh, kind of followed it, followed it down here into, into this bit of shelf that's, uh, that's been happening. If we can uh, just go oh, to the nice. chart there a little bit um, so you can see that right there so we're, we're attempting to break that shelf right now I did uh, I did stop out or not really stop out I, I, I kind of got out of most of it before I came here got in a little bit and tightened up the stop there so a little bit of a shelf happening at the 5460s let's see where we go from there Wow Walmart coming right back in as well on uh, on that and the other name as you asked was Intel so Intel uh, Pretty much chopped it up pretty heavily, had the long off the open through the 45. That was really nice. And then it couldn't really follow through 40, 45 halves. So uh, I kind of fl I started flipping short there um, for the reversion. And the reversion did come in real nice, but I had nowhere near the amount of uh, uh, amount of size that I had on the way up. So I'm like kind of kind of thinking about that. Um, yeah, sure. I was expecting that uh, expecting that kind of move up, a little continuation to the upside. There goes Google as well. So same thing here. I had a lot more here. You look at all those reds, right? And then I just cover everything and I get back for a fraction of the amount underneath 155 for the flush. And uh, lo and behold, it comes in all right now. So uh, just to, I guess I'll, I'll try to I'll try to preserve my preserve my mental there, not get a, not get too uh, too much FOMO there as uh, this is the move that I was looking for. And I have uh, literally one eighth of the size uh, that I wanted uh, or that I had initially and that I really wanted on this trade right now. But uh, yeah, let's see how it goes here. 
uh, futures come into the lows there. What did you have on watch today? Yeah, it's a nice look on Google. It's too bad that the move uh, that you wanted didn't come until a little bit later. But that's a really nice Without look. Without me a little bit, but it's fine. Yeah, um, yeah. My, my guess, my biggest thing on watch here was this NVDA. Just got out of this um, as we head into the lesson. So took about a 50 cent hit on, on the DCA. I want to explain the, the concept behind this. So basically why I initially got in was I have my five minute chart here. Look at these uh, kind of failed wicks the downside we have here. We're holding up at 907. I get in. We actually get up to 90870. And this is kind of right as the, the midday began. So I did not have my profit takers ready at a really small position. I added in a little bit here at that 905. 50 once I noticed that we um, held and retook this 905 area really well because um, by the time I was paying back attention to this, we'd already kind of had that move down and recovered. I ended up just getting out at, where did I get out? 906 uh, because I was just like, we have, to, we have to leave before the lesson. And this is definitely not something you want to stay in while you're talking and not looking at your computer for a period of time, right? So yeah. that was why I was like, NVIDIA, we have to leave you be. Now NVIDIA is kind of recovering back to my, my point of entry uh, in terms of that DCA, which was that... 90649, I believe. So nice move back up here for the NVDA. If we continue holding this level, I do continue to love these failed uh, wicks here to the downside, showing that buyers are overwhelming sellers. I think there could be something here. It also happens to coincide a little bit, little bit of confluence, if you will, hey. with this um, free market area we had around that 906, 907. So I do think there's still something in the water here for NVDA. I do want to keep watching it. Uh, yeah, I definitely fumbled my entries a little bit here. I'm not going to lie. I I'm still in the sim. I still need to do my compliance test. But once I have uh, set some time aside for that, hopefully going to get into this. Yeah, I, I guess I could have been a little bit more patient. Now NVIDIA is at that 908 area I was eyeing. But it's all good. Uh, you know, as Obi was saying earlier, you can't FOMO, right? You just have to kind of brush it off your shoulders, yeah. keep going and seeing what this market has to give you. But right now, what we have to give you is a lesson. It's not my best transition. Um, we're going to talk here about trading in different times of day. That's kind of going to be the theme of the week. And uh, trading the open is not something I know as much about because I do trade exclusively during these midday hours of 11 to 2. So if anyone in the chat has any insights they want to share or, um, you know, Obi, of course, you definitely know trading open, trading the open much better than me. So anyone has anything uh, they want to share, any insights, definitely tag me or um, pipe in there because I think this is a, a really interesting conversation about how there are different strategies and different takes you have to take while you're uh, trading different times of day. So let's start with the introduction. Morning trading, uh, basically is pretty basic here, but trading the open or trading in the morning is gonna basically refer to trading usually that occurs within the first hour of the trading day, so at 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. And one of the benefits of trading during this time of day, of course, is that you have this extra volatility that traders can capitalize on, you know what I mean? Um, it is especially ahead of some of the slower action that's found during the midday. So during the midday, you definitely have a bit of a cooling off period between that really hectic morning hour and the power hour, the stuff later in the day, which we're going to talk about later this week. But so um, trading in the morning definitely gives you that rush of volatility if that's the type of thing you're looking for as a trader. So why the morning matters so much is you get all of this volume. The volume at market open does tend to be some of the strongest of the day, uh, which can give traders lots of opportunities to get involved in liquid stocks. And if an asset or index is lower volume off the open, it can suggest a lack of interest in the asset or market that day. So this volume that you get, A, can give you lots of opportunities to get involved, but B, if there's less volume, it can give you a sense of that potentially being an issue going into the day that there is gonna be a little bit less participation in the market or in that asset or what have you. Direction also is, is really key to, to keep an eye on right off the open. So the direction that a stock moves immediately off the open can give market participants a sense of whether investors or traders are feeling bullish or bearish heading into the, sen uh, the session. So basically giving you a really quick sense of sentiment. Of course that can change, but the move we get right away can, can really give you a feel for how market participants are feeling. Levels, of course, uh, really important as well because this action that we get off the open can give traders a sense of levels that could be important for the asset during the session. So basically early levels of support and resistance. And also the opening price of an asset can be really important for indicators like pivots. You know, uh, Sharif, who is hopefully enjoying his safari, Sharif, I know, ta has talked a lot about pivot points, especially as of late. So those are certainly really important um, levels to keep in mind, and those are based on these opening levels. Um, when you trade the, the morning, are there any particular things you look for um, differently compared to, to trading in different times of the day? 
Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, off the off the morning, we can just talk about uh, kind of the the couple of trades that I had today off uh, off Intel and uh, Google. Um, you can see that uh, just as Adara mentioned, very very uh, aggressive uh, aggressive volume and volatility right off of the open. You can see that Google does uh, a little bit of uh, multiples of ATR right off the open, 150 to 155, so about five points, uh, and in a very short amount of time. And yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of ha that kind of has me looking for that potential reversion uh, as well. But uh, yeah, if you're there for that drive, I think you can see that uh, we, we took some uh, took some fills on Intel as well going into the 45 there. And yeah, opening opening drive or opening flushes if there's this if there's like one direction that things are things are going and you have some levels for uh, predefined levels that you want to interact at, I think the open can be a great time to look for opportunities uh, for sure. But uh, yeah, no, let, let us know in the chat. What, what are some names you guys might have traded off of the open how how might you trade the open as well um, I know some people like to take the opening print right off some people like to take uh, look at pre-market action if it's doing our vol and then relative to how we open uh, pre-market action relative to that pre-market highs and lows previous day highs and lows if those come into play right off of the open but uh, yeah no definitely lots of opportunity and I know a lot of people talk about uh, talk about the opening range breaks as well right so you have that initial initial range that's been defined and then you take the break or you look for the break of that uh, of that range to give you more information to either uh, kind of be a little bit more patient or maybe maybe execute as well so um, lots of opportunity off the open and there yeah no thank you and I appreciate you going over those too because both those trades are examples of different strategies you can take off the open to rate Intel buying into that momentum or Google waiting for it to kind of settle and then taking your opportunity and honestly getting basically top wick on that short which is uh, a really nice look there so yeah I, I appreciate those because they're, they're two uh, different examples of different strategies you can get on the same day off yeah. the open so I thought thank off you for the sim off similar action that's right? true too yeah, right yeah, yeah you're right yeah. it's like both playing off of the, those movements up and playing them in, in different ways so yeah thank you so much for uh, for going over that and if anyone else has any examples, uh, definitely let us know. Quinn Clock and Tax saying, I like opening range breakouts and breakdowns. Yeah, that's a, that's a good oh, yeah. point. And that kind of um, pretty similar too, to, to what you were just mentioning as well. So I think that's a nice look. Also, Sean saying, here's $7 on Meta. So all I have to do is um, clap that's there and shout out to Sean Look's with his meta. $7 um, on Meta because nice look there. Also, uh, last slide of the lesson here, wow, just some other nice. factors to consider same, here same, reversion short. when it's you're like, taking yeah, these um, morning trades. Also, yeah, that's a good point too. Yeah, um, OP pointing out as well, uh, what, what Sean did with Meta is um, a, reversion, a reversion short, which is another play that you can play right off the open. Nice. And um, the, the sticky, sticky note. note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, it's Sean's, uh, Sean's calling these uh, calling these tops SMH as well. Eh? Okay, yeah, nice, sure. nice, yeah, wow, beautiful. Ooh. Okay, so that's that's kind of what I was looking for. So I, I I played that move on Intel, and Intel was taking a taking a little bit of a while, and Google as well. Google not really being a chip name, but I was sitting back there at my desk, and I was like, maybe I'm not in the right vehicle to take this uh, to take this short because it's happening pretty much everywhere. The market's reverting, the yes is flushing, so it's like, yeah, if you had the same short idea. On the NQ, you can catch about 100 points. On the ES, about 30 points. Or on Intel, you can catch about 40 cents. So it's like, depending on the vehicle that you're using to take, uh, take a certain per, uh, part of the beta move, it can uh, yield different results. Let's just say that. And that's uh, definitely a learning lesson. But yeah, solid, solid short there on uh, both SMH and Meta there, Sean. Yeah, nice, I guess. It's, yeah, the, certainly um, Sean killing it with those uh, shorts off the open. Yeah, I think it shows, too, there's always different opportunities you can find off the open, right? So uh, you had uh, your success with Intel and Google, and then Sean with uh, these very different names as well, and there's always opportunities uh, depending on what you want to look for off the open for the most part, right, which is cool, especially in a day like today where, I mean, if you saw the upgrades and downgrades, there wasn't a lot happening today uh, on the surface. Even news-wise, there wasn't too much, but there's definitely always opportunities, especially right in that morning hour if, if you know where to look. So I think that's really cool. Shout-out to Obi and Sean uh, for those trades. But also some factors to consider as well when uh, you're looking at these opening levels. One thing to keep in mind for trading off the open is you have this greater volatility, which can bring, you know, lots of excitement and opportunities for profit, but it also brings greater risk because trends and directions can be susceptible to change. So with that in mind, be prepared to leave the trade quickly 
if you need to, right? Whether it be through taking profit or executing, exiting with a loss. So you have to figure out and set your profit taking and stop loss levels right when you enter the trade so that you can take advantage of and fail to be swept up in the sudden price movements that are common in morning trading. And last but not least here, make sure that you're aware of any economic releases, Fed speak, or earnings calls if applicable. So if we're talking like, you know, CCL, those names that have weird earnings calls like 10 a.m., uh, that are going to be scheduled during the first half hour or hour of the trading day. So today we had some examples with those uh, S&P Global and ISM PMI releases coming in the morning. Also yep. consumer confidence numbers usually scheduled around 10 a.m., right? So there are certain numbers that you are going to get in that first half hour that it's, it's worth noting uh, to be aware of. And also Sean was mentioning that earlier today as well, like being aware and being apprised of these economic data because they can impact the trade and you can get, you don't want to get lost in the sauce to, to borrow an opium there. But I think, yeah, so definitely something to be Washing even harder. aware of. You just oh. got to short the futures at this point, right, Sean? It's like, yeah, nice. But yeah, that is the, um, that's the end of the lesson there. And I have to say, I'm so happy I left that NVIDIA long before the lesson because oh. NVIDIA just broke below 900. So Sean's definitely in the money, money, money on nice, that SMH nice. short because, wow. Yeah, I, again, I'm not super on. proud of how I set this up. Like I just said this in the lesson, when you get into a trade, and if it's going to be volatile, make sure you set your outs immediately, which I absolutely did not do in NVIDIA. Happy, I, we only lost 50 cents on this, which is, of course, not ideal, but I'm happy I was able to manage this in this way, especially before we had that giant flush to the downside there on NVDA, which is definitely a great short. Yeah, I wish I had I kind of more that I was looking at here. AMD also was looking a skosh rangey, kind of like a baby NVIDIA here, the way we had this chop and churn. Um, but now we're kind of falling below that as well. These are lines I think I drew earlier, but oddly enough, this 182 actually still holding as a potential level. I mean, right now we broke below it, but I think if that 182 comes back into play, I might have some stuff to keep in mind there. Kyle Burdett, thank you so much for the $2 super chat saying, Adara, give me your best dump it. I'll try. Damp it. I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not Sharif. Um, yeah. we made it's tough to do it like he does, you know? Pardon? I said it's tough to do it like he yeah, does. Like he has a very out. distinct distinct way of, uh, you know, <laughs> You know, like the pamp it and the damp it right. or dump it. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a really specific um, flavor to the cadence that he uses for that. Yeah, but, that's for sure. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we're done, we're done the lesson for the day. We do repeat the lessons um, two more times. You'll hear some more for that. And I'm definitely excited to get into some more of the different times of day for trading. But yeah, I think the morning, really important. Yeah. I was happy we were able to get some uh, live examples there from Obi and Sean. Um, yeah, I, I don't have too much on the horizon right now for myself trading wise. NVIDIA, I'm going to probably try to stay away from because that name is a little much. But some people were tagging me earlier, including uh, someone named Shinobi in the chat. Shout out to you saying that Tesla Shinobi. actually is not looking bad as a long here. And I actually, I totally see where you're coming from. So we had that move uh, down here. We kind of were hanging out at that 170.50 area. A couple weeks to the downside and then getting these candles buying this up showing hey i think there's some buying strength here now what i want to wait for because this is a level that for whatever reason a i keep an eye on and b i find can actually be pretty important for gauging direction i want to see us reclaim and sit above that 9 ema area we are right now dancing just below it the one thing that does give me confidence for this level holding is look at this candle here we had this massive move to the downside actually below that 171 now we're up here at 171.50 so this nice. candle is giving you a sense of some more bullish movement but i want to actually see a reclaim and a little perch above that 9 EMA area, that 171.50, 171.60. Now, this might seem arbitrary, but I know this is a level that can form as resistance, so I don't want to buy into it as resistance. You know what I mean? If we keep resisting this, I will go short, mind you. But I think that we do have these candles, and especially this wick here, suggesting that there is a long, potentially, on the horizon for the Cybertruck. And so I do not want to be caught unawares. I want to be very uh, cognizant of these levels here on Tesla, and if we can reclaim that 9 EMA, I would be pleased as punch, and I will be stepping into a long on this level. Um, also, yeah, Mo Mohegan Scalper saying short Tesla at your own peril. I think right now, for sure, that is that is kind of what I'm seeing here. We are increasingly, yeah, we're basically at this level I want here, which is a little rest here and a perch on that 9 EMA. So I think to me, this is this is my, I don't want to say best idea because it's it's basically my first idea, <laughs> but this is an idea that I I don't mind. Right now, so shout out to the people mentioning this potential Tesla long. I want to see us have this little bounce, this trampoline area off this 9 EMA, and then I think I will 
be getting involved. Yeah, a lot of things kind of fell out of previous areas there that Google fell. Microsoft as well, you were mentioning, was, was pretty tightly yeah. wound here. And now we're falling a little bit here on this Microsoft as well. We definitely, I like this earlier range area just because I love ranges of this um, 422 area to that 423.80. If we can kind of reclaim that, that could be interesting. Right now, though, we're just kind of hanging out around this earlier pre-market area where VWAP was forming in the pre. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to try to buy into Tesla right now. What are you looking at? Um, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at something. I'm trying to find something to get into. But uh, yeah, these uh, these tickers are falling falling to the ground there. With again with the NQ and the ES, you can see Intel. I'm at, I am in a little bit of Intel uh, as well from earlier. Uh, not enough of Google, but Google relatively strong as the whole market dumps and it seems to be holding this 154 half kind of shelf here uh, as the market dumps and goes uh, goes to the downside here. So I'm just curious to know what uh, some of these uh, constituents are up to. So yeah, I know that it, NVIDIA is breaking to the downside. Apple steady selling to the uh, to the downside. Fresh lows about to print. Um, Softy, we're talking about that. Softy as well. Uh, couldn't really break the low there. 422 half as of right now, but let's see. We'll, we'll give it some more time there and see if that comes into fruition. That 18.4 potentially comes Coming in as well, 18.6 rejected. Couldn't really get past that 18.6 on uh, on the NQ. So we're watching Google as well. Google holding quite distinctly. Um, I am a little short here. Might be a little cheeky uh, getting short like that on a relatively strong name that manages to hold in the upper quartile of this strength that we had. You can see 150 to 155s, and we've only held above 54 halves as of right now with about a point of consolidation or kind of a slowdown here of this, uh, of this strength off the open. So a few different potential, uh, potential scenarios uh, maybe, but uh, let's, see, let's see what it does. I'm looking for that continuation to the downside, if that'll even come in on Google L. But it's a good thing, I guess, now I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't rag red is, uh, no, not, not rag reading that much um, uh, to the downside uh, uh, on Google. The lack of follow through to the downside on Google, the stop out that I did have, the stop out or the take profit or whatever you want to call it, I was just like, okay, well, this is taking a little longer than I expected. So I do want to, I do want to kind of uh, get out of that one there. But yeah, potentially I, I hear uh, some people talking about a potential bounce uh, as well, right? Yeah. So if the if we're going to quadunk this hard and heavy to the downside, uh, I am potentially looking for a little bit of a bounce. And there goes a, uh, a little bit of a bounce there on NVIDIA 895 coming right back up. So what, are, what were some of the lows from last week? We see that 890s, 891s were some of the lows that held up uh, Thursday. Uh, it was Wednesday and Thursday. Friday was off. Um, Wednesday and Thursday. So the, so the final days of last week, we're holding above some of those levels as of right now on NVIDIA, but uh, below below 900, below VWAP as well. So yeah, we couldn't necessarily hold VWAP, comes right back through, back through the open as well. Uh, let's see what some of these tickers have in store for us today. People talking about IBIT as well. So Bitcoin's one that I didn't really look at uh, as of right now, but yeah, okay, so Bitcoin kind of uh, in step, a little bit of a flush happening off of uh, over the past hour or so there. So. Um, See, where's that 930 open? So 930, we pretty much uh, can't really get above this 70 thou, and we've uh, come into the downside. So people mentioning IBIT in the chat. So IBIT, straight flush. So there's that, there's that little consolidation that we saw relative to that 70 thou on, uh, on Bitcoin. And, and then that is reflected with this consolidation here at 40 on IBIT, and then a little bit of a flush all the way down, one point flush to 39, and now we're holding that 39 as of right now. So um, Bitcoin doing some moves, interesting stuff. The shorts were definitely on in the morning. Um, did any of you have have any of those shorts there? Uh, I kind of, a uh, little bit of a fumble on my part there, only getting short on Intel and Google, while the rest of the market uh, kind of falls on its face there. So what's the next trade? That's what I'm asking. Maybe a potential bounce here off of that 18.4, or uh, let's see if we can reclaim this uh, 53 on, uh, on the E. Yes, there as well. What are you guys watching? Uh, let me know. I'm looking for a potential bounce as well. Yeah, that IBIT looking good. If uh, if Google is going to hold here and kind of continue to the upside, I'll definitely get out of that one and uh, and reassess. I think if the market kind of bounces and Google's been holding that relative strength, maybe a little bit more umph on that market bounce to hold to push us back through some of these highs there. 
or we kind of come back to the uh, to the downside. I have no idea, but this action on Google L is quite uh, quite interesting. Let me know what you guys are trading, and we can take a quick uh, look at that as well. I know AMD. Oh boy, AMD with uh, with a bit of a uh, bit of reversion. I'm just looking at some of the some of the top volume uh, leaders on the day here. AMD being the third on the list, and yeah. Talking about a talk about a reversion on chips. I'm getting short on Intel 4520s. That same move comes in 86 halves, 87s, 85s, and now AMD is pushing 181s, 180, uh, 181 halves as of right now. So on that same move, now this is something I'm going to have to kind of uh, reevaluate and reconsider. Is that if I'm looking at a sector move and I'm looking at the sector to take uh, take a shot at something like Intel or uh, or, or or SMH, um, what are some of the better vehicles to kind of get involved with? Sure, Intel is, uh, Intel is pretty decent, but uh, AMD doing, a, doing a, uh, I think, a greater magnitude of a move, obviously NVIDIA as well. Let me just pull up that uh, Intel tape here so we can look at it together. So yeah, Intel trading at uh, 4430s to 4435s. Um, it's pretty much still in the downtrend. Let's see where this, these NQs are going to slow down here. But as of right now, it doesn't seem like any real, uh, any real slowing down as of right now on these futures or on some of these names. But yeah, let, let us know what you guys are trading. Are you guys trading anything short? Or maybe you guys have a long. Somebody has a long. Something is acting distinctly different. Maybe some, uh, some other tickers. Uh, first one that kind of pops into my head is uh, if all of tech is doing this, what are, uh, what are some of the other tickers like Home Depot or like Pepsi or, um, or Broadcom up to right now? So let's take a quick look at some of those. Uh, Pepsi to the downside. Uh, wow, that's quite a, quite a bit of a flush there on Pepsi. Home Depot, let's take a quick look at that. Home Depot to the downside as well. Uh, AVGO, let's take a quick look at Broadcom. Broadcom, okay, so Broadcom uh, holding up. A little bit better, but did kind of pull back off of uh, off of some of those highs uh, in the in the morning session. So, yeah, we're talking about uh, trading in the morning versus the other times right now, or like midday to late day. And I think yeah, it is a, it is a little bit of a different trading. Things are so much more fast paced and aggressive in the, in the morning session, whereas uh, midday you can see kind of a little bit of more methodic, uh, kind of a, a grinding down or grinding up, or a little bit of a slower move. Uh, tends to happen, I think. But uh, again, it's it's volume volume dependent. If a bunch of volume kind of comes in, I think you can look for that uh, look for a potential move to to happen. But what do I know? I'm just waiting for the next opportunity. There. What do you got going on, in there? Yeah, no, and I I, I have right now two trades, uh, a Tesla long, which is cooking. Also, I do want to address this. It will have shown on the position board for two seconds that I was short Tesla. Shocker, I did fat finger. I'm getting better about the fat fingers, but I am not perfect. So we did have a little bit of a fat finger moment on TSLA. So I took it short. Uh, we lost like very minuscule, maybe two pennies on that. Then I went long. The bigger issue though too was because I, I spent some time going short and then I would get out of the short. I got in about 10 to 20 pennies later than I wanted to for the short. So not my favorite price entry area, to be honest, but I'm okay with it right now. I have a profit taker set at that 172.40 area because I do love taking out pieces of the position as we get into previous areas of support or resistance. This, to me, this little baby candle, uh, as we had this move to the downside at 10.20, especially on the five minute, to me could be a potential area of resistance because it weirdly showed uh, up as a baby support area on Tesla on the way down, so I do want all of that smoke there. Also, I'm in a short, and my short is Microsoft, and I'm actually pretty happy with this so far too, I have to say. So why I got involved here? Couple reasons. A, as I've said, I love when the 90 MA shows up as a support resistant area. I am trying to be less reliant on this level, and admittedly probably failing, but I do think there are some times where it does show up and you wanna take advantage of, of the stuff that you see, right? So I did go short here, just shy of that 424 area, and this is an area I had my eye on, as we kind of got into this, because I noticed every time we get to this 90 MA, not, not every time, but like the last couple times we've gotten, so it's been, this is the third time now we get there and we struggle to get above. So I thought this could be an interesting short to keep an eye on. I watched as it happen and then I got involved. Highest we've gotten since I've gotten in here has been like that 424.05, 424.08 area. We haven't gotten above 424.10 that I've seen. If we get decisively above into this 424.40s area, that's where I'm gonna have to leave. I'd be interested in getting out around this 423.25. So that could be a skosh ambitious, but I think 
there's probably some potential there. It's a really small position. I'm going to actually set my, my profit taker there. So if we get back down into that 423, uh, 25 for 23 30 area which was that previous area of I don't know, yeah I guess previous support but also it would be I I think we could make a lower low but I want to take it out at the previous low in case we can't so that's my area there that I'm interested in Tesla taking a little bit of a pause and it's move back to the upside if we get back down to this 90 MA area I want to add to this position at 171 um 171.69, so about where I added in, we'd just be averaging in for, for the same amount because I just want a little bit more of this position. I'm noticing for whatever reason, and probably actually, I say for whatever reason, it's probably because of the whole dollar level. We're having a little bit of an issue here at this 172, so if I had more shares, which I currently do not, I'd be interested in taking some out at that 172. I don't have a huge position, so that's why I want to add to that position, so I have enough room for that 172 uh, profit taker. 172 40 profit taker and then a piece for the dream as we get a little higher so part of this again is probably with planning the trade i should have given myself a few more shares to begin with but it is what it is say la vie you can not dwell in the past all you can do is dwell in the future and and try to you know do what you have to do for the trade so let's see what we do here in tsla if it wants to give me a little bit more wiggle room in terms of more shares i would i would not argue i would not disagree so let's see what what occurs uh, what else am I looking at? AMD is still on my side chart. And yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll switch to that. What do I have? I have the three minute on my side chart. So I'll switch here to kind of see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna delete this level though, because I don't really like it anymore. Yeah, I think we're, we're having a little bit of resistance. It's, so I guess a slightly lower high here, but that 12250 area, I mentioned earlier like that 182, but I think this 12250 decent rejection. We did just make a slightly higher high here, I guess, if you want to say from that 182 area. But generally, we're rejecting or we're respecting these lower highs, lower lows. I do agree, though, with that area that you pointed out earlier, Obi. We have a bit of um, accumulating here at this 181.30 with that little bit of a wick to the downside that we kind of had bought up. So you're going to have to keep an eye on this. I'm not really sure what direction AMD wants to go quite yet, but it's something I want to keep my eye on and see what happens. Basically, flood on Microsoft. About 30 pennies in the money on Tesla, so nothing to complain about. Just looking for more trading opportunities as this market continues to get going. If anyone sees anything they're taking a look at, let me know. Thank you, Mohican Scalper. Much appreciated. Let's see how this goes. Austin Carr, I want to take a look at this. Can you guys take a quick look at Nikola chart today? Talk about how you would have traded that today. Crazy morning movement in the pre-market, tank after open, and then VWAP bounce. Or then V bounce. Yeah, so um, Austin Carr, also very fitting, too, because... Um, Last name Carl, though C A R R, and you're going to talk about a car company, uh, which is Nikola. I always enjoy puns and stuff like that. This is an interesting one. So this is a this is very much a penny stock, or I guess no, no, we're above a dollar now. So it's not a name that I, I typically know how to trade a lot, but I mean chart movement wise, I can take a look at this one for you. I believe I looked at this early. Do we have a catalyst for NKLA? This one, you're right, had a ton of movement in the pre market. Um, oh, it announced that it's taking. Um, legal action against the company it sold the Badger Electric pickup truck assets to last year. So that's, I guess, the, the biggest news I'm, I'm seeing here for NKLA. So we had, yeah, we had some nice movement up here in the pre-market. I think at one point I saw we were up like 12% in the pre-market for Nikola that I saw. Continuing to kind of uh, chop and churn in this range of about 113 to 116, 117 in the morning. Then we fall with a viciousness right off the open. We come back to that 111, sell off a little bit more. Then we have, I guess, on the three minute, maybe sort of a double bounce here at 97 cents. And we continue to climb above that $1 area. Like it's not even a whole dollar area. Nikola does not care. It's like, oh, we're going to keep going. Continuing to, to bounce off this 90 MA here. And now we're kind of chopping and turning just above view up. I think it's a nice recovery area. The area, though, that I would absolutely be keeping an eye on is going to be uh, this 106. And I say that because A, we're kind of struggling to get above here earlier, but B was a little bit of support uh, right off the open here. So 930, these candles at 930 and 933, both having some kind of significance around that 106, right? Now we're failing to get above there again. So I think reclaiming 106 would be a nice look right now. We, it looks like we're resisting in a bit. Also, we had two super chats here. Thank you very much here to Willis Addison. $2 super chat. What a day. Hashtag humbled. Swing puts. Tesla. Spy. GME. A uh, flying dollar emoji, chart emoji, paid. So congrats to you. <laughs> nice look there. Yeah, Tesla off the open was that was a really enticing short, as Sean uh, was showing us there earlier today with his win. Also, thank you so much to Yoel Reyna for the five dollar super chat. Good luck, vibe super chat for all of us. Those vibes much appreciated. 
Thank you so much for, for being here with us today, everybody. And let's let's make some more trades. I see that you are in Google. Yeah, so uh, I, I did get a little bit more there on Google. Got out of the Intel uh, there because uh, it's it was about uh, almost a, almost a full point to the downside. A decent chunk of uh, a decent chunk of ATR there. So I'm like, all right, well, if some of these chips uh, may potentially bounce, um, I do want to get out of that one. Don't want to don't want to. Uh, stay in that for for too too long, but uh, yeah, onto the onto the next one is what I'm looking at here. Uh, let's take a quick look at Nvidia as well. Nvidia, kind of the leader of uh, of the chips, and uh, yeah, it's still still kind of pretty weak there. Pretty close to its uh, day low there, 894.23, only about two points away from day low as it is kind of uh, slamming right back into previous previous lows here. So like I said before, kind of pointed out um, some support from uh, the end of last week, which also happens to be uh, the low of last week as well uh, in and around this uh, 980, what is it, sorry, 892-ish area here. So 892s um, is, the, is a previous week low on NVIDIA. Do we get there? We're hovering right above that, hovering just a couple points above, above that. So uh, NVIDIA, I think NVIDIA can, NVIDIA can easily do a couple points here or there uh, like, it's, uh, like, it's, like it's nobody's business. But uh, yeah, let's see if it kind of comes back, comes back into previous weeks lower. Do we hover and hold above some of those levels there? NQ looking like a potential bounce here. You can see that we printed the first kind of green candle there, printing, uh, attempting to print the second one here. Same thing with the ES. So a little, little bit of a different candle being printed. Uh, since the open here, you can see that we've uh, pretty much only printed uh, printed reds after the first candle there. First candle quite aggressive and strong right off of the open right there. Look at that 930 candle uh, here on the NQ. Rips right up from 18.5 to 18.6s. 100 points in the first 15 minutes and then can't really get too far past that for the next 45 minutes and then we get a nice little flush to the downside. So a little bit of a failure to follow through back towards some of those highs. And yeah, Nvidia attempting to push for a fresher, high, a fresher low there. So let's take a quick look at NQ. I do want to take a um, uh, look at a higher time frame here. Let's go to the hourly real quick and see where we're sitting. Uh, we'll see where we're sitting at here. So um, as of last week, we attempted to push through, okay, okay, I like that. So we attempted to push 18 sevens, right? We got that little contract switch, a uh, bit of a gap on the contract switch. We can't really push past that 18 seven, comes back into 18 hundreds, holds, holds, retries for that 18 seven. When is this? Uh, last, last Thursday, so two weeks ago. And then we've been kind of pulling back off of that with a bit of a hold of this 18.4 ish area here as of right now. So that's how, that's kind of what I'm looking at. That's happened over the past week or so. A um, little bit of a, a resistance on top, maybe uh, not as strong as a as a support here. That 18.4 maybe a little stronger here at these lows. But zooming out a little bit and looking at the daily, we can see that we're we're pretty much uh, we're pretty much well within uh, within trend here. On, uh, on the NQs, even with this volatility and this craziness. Look at that nice little melodic kind of grind up on the daily, attempting to push higher and higher every week. So uh, yeah, volatility definitely there, opportunities for sure. How are you guys trading some of this price action? I'm curious to know, are you guys, tra are you guys involved in any of the futures? Um, Will R saying the Dixie continues to pull up. Yeah, let's take a quick look at the DXY there. Uh, we know the dollar has been moving around pretty decently. Wow, take a look at that, 105s, eh? Okay, so um, we were watching it last week. We were kind of chopping around the 104s to 103s, as I remember correctly, and we're finally attempting some fresh highs uh, on, uh, what is this, on the year, actually. So the Dixie pushing highs on the year, uh, it would seem as of right now, when was the last time we were at some of these levels? In November, so November, uh, last last year of November, we were at some of these prices, and now we're coming right back into some of these 105s coming in on the DXY. So yeah, thank you, Will R, for pointing that out. Uh, it, it does look like a DXY is continuing the pump there on the dollar. Yeah, DXY has been really strong um, today for sure. Nice, nice move up there into that 105 area. Yeah, no, I think. Really, really nice look there for the dollar, especially with, we have like four Fed speakers a day for the next three days. So four tomorrow, four Wednesday, four Thursday. So certainly 
no shortage of communications or talking that could potentially impact that DXY. Uh, pretty pretty fascinating stuff. Also fascinating is Microsoft. That not not really. It's it's, it's pretty it's pretty dead. But I was trying to think of a transition here. So I stayed in this. Like I said, I wanted to watch what we did at that 424.40, and what we did was reject beautifully. I tried to add in here, and Microsoft was like, N -n 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 -n. I wanted to get in 424.20s, but we we sold off really quickly, which does make me feel a little bit better about the long go or the short story going forward. However, it'd be nice if we had, you know, a little bit more shares, but that's okay. Uh, my newest strategy has been starting with really small positions and then trying to build up. So I, I am aware that sometimes that will leave me a little bit flat-footed and caught unawares. If I do want a little bit more oomph, then the, the market ends up giving us, right? So happy there right now, no complaints, although I still have that, you know, that order set if we do get back above into that 424.20 area. Continuing to sell off though here for Microsoft, I still have that, that er I, my exit area at 423.30s, 423.25-esque. Also, Tesla, we were able to add on that nice little dip into the 90 MA. I was pleased as punch with this. We had that move into the 90 MA. We go down and able to get my beak wetter here. And I didn't, I added the position at the same price. So we still have 171.69s here. But now we have a little bit more shares. So we were able to take some of this position out at that previous area of resistance at 172.20. So happy that things are going to according to plan right now for the TSLA position. I would like to see us, you know, be a little bit stronger than 172.20. However, if we continue ranging, I like a good range. I'll keep playing this range. I have no qualms about that. I just would like Tesla to decide what it would like to be when it grows up. Because right now, it's settling into a bit of a range, and I do think there still could be some potential long opportunities here. As long as we keep bouncing off this 90 MA, though, I'll stay in this. I have no issues with that. Microsoft continuing to be a little bit chop and churn, so I'm... I don't have much to report there. Yeah, I, I wish I had some eyes on some more stuff for sure. One thing I am eyeing is a potential NVIDIA short. Now I say potential because we're talking about NVIDIA here. NVIDIA also, I like usually trading off the one minute, so I've pulled this up here, and I like trading off the one minute for NVIDIA because I don't want to stay too long if I'm an NVIDIA trade. Do you know what I mean? I'm scalpier by nature. And NVIDIA moves like, I don't know, it's how this has been set on fire. I can't think of a good comparison here, but NVIDIA moves with a swiftness and a viciousness that you do not want to get entangled in, which is why I find I tend to, A, I think be a little bit more successful, although success is, of course, relative and sometimes a strong word, but I find that I, I'm usually a little bit able to more control the emotional elements of the trade and have my profit taker set a little bit better if I trade NVIDIA off the one minute. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this. If we keep rejecting off this 90 MA, I am noticing lower highs, lower lows. We broke below that earlier area of pseudo support at the 895.40. So I feel like we could keep going. I think I might've missed this uh, rip sell opportunity. I guess the opposite of a dip buy being a rip sell. But if we come and continue to reject off that what that 895.50 area, I'll get in. I, I think that there's something here and there's something to, to be said for this level. For now though, I wanna add to my Tesla because we're getting back in to that area that I was looking to add here. So we're gonna add a little bit here to this position. Um, just because I want to keep adding here as we get into this range. I'm thinking this is going to be a bit rangier, so I'm going to have to adapt my strategy. But like I said, I, I don't ever have a problem with trading ranges. I just want to know if it's a range. We did not get filled there, so Tesla continuing to chop and churn. But I mean, yeah, Tesla, if you want me to leave earlier, that's fine by me. <laughs> I'll just keep reloading here. I You got to learn to adapt your strategy. Uh, to quote the office, um, you know, Michael Scott from The Office, adapt, react, readapt, act, and sometimes that's what the market is giving you and you have to, to trade accordingly. Yeah, no, that's, that's for sure. You, I, li I like that one. Um, uh, you always got to continue to reassess and reevaluate based off of the new information that, uh, that you consistently are being bombarded with. Um, uh, but yeah, some, some information more, a lot more significant, uh, significant than others. But yeah, uh, market is attempting for a little bit of a bounce here. I'm watching the AMD, I'm watching uh, um, NVIDIA, Intel as well right here, and I saw that uh, uh, Ponzi Fonzi in the chat, shout out, uh, saying that AMD 50 SMA is like a magnet. Okay, so I don't really have my uh, 50 SMA on here, but uh, let's take a quick look at wh what that might look like. So um, I do wanna pull that up. So let me just pull up a uh, simple moving. So we'll throw the simple moving up there, and then let's change that to a 50 period right here, okay? So let's take a quick look. What is uh, what is AMD and its 50 period SMA 
doing right here. So uh, yeah, a little bit of like a magnet, it would seem. So uh, it kind of comes in. Uh, how are you looking at it? Is this, is this the same SMA that you kind of have on, uh, on your chart there, Ponzi? Uh, let me know in the chat and we can take a quick look. And I guess the t if you change the frame, it'll be, a little bit, uh, it'll be a little bit different. So it seems like it's coasting on the 15 a little bit nicer uh, if you're looking for those longs. But on a shorter time frame, that, uh, that SMA is a little bit in between. Sure, it was there off the open, but uh, kind of holding below it as of right now. So, um, yeah, what, what, uh, what time frames do you, do you guys like looking at some of these, uh, some of these indicators on? I'm curious, uh, curious to know. I like the shorter time frames. I like the, uh, as uh, Dara just mentioned, one minute I think I, is not too bad. But I try to stay a little, little away from the one minute. I like the, I like the three minute better. I like the five minute, the 15 minute, the hourly, the 30 minute. Uh, as well, maybe the weekly as well. So uh, yeah, so Google is kind of raging to the upside here. So probably gonna get out of this one soon enough if it continues this kind of behavior. Um, AMD potentially looking for a bounce here, but it's looking looking kind of weak. Let me get this SMA out of the way. Um, but yeah, look. So on the 15 minute, it's a little wicky. It's a little wicky from the from the downside there, um, off of that 181. And uh, let's see if it kind of catches a curls, catches a curl or catches a little bit of a bounce. Let's see. Let's put VWAP back on uh, here, so we can get a good look at v where VWAP may or may not be. Let's take these Bollinger these bands out of the way, right here. I don't really. How many people use? Uh, the the I guess the bands on their on their VWAP. I know there's a few people that that might, but uh, I'm curious to know how many people are kind of incorporating that into their trading. I've never really been one to look at uh, standard deviations off of uh, off of VWAP, but uh, again. I'm curious to know how many people are. Is that is that something you guys have tracked? Is that something you guys are interested in? Um, let us know in the chat there. But nothing too crazy. Market's not really bouncing as of right now. Some strength there on Google. Uh, point us in the right direction. If you guys have some names that you want us to look at, uh, CXAI saying a lot of people. I know again, uh, it, it is a volume leader or one of the volume leaders on the day today. So let's take a quick look at CXAI and see what uh, that is up to. So yeah, okay, so decent. Uh, it's doing some, definitely doing some Arval off of the open. Now has this thing had news? I haven't, I wasn't really looking at this name here. So let's take a look at the five minute here. So nice little strong uh, uh, continuation, nice little trend off of the VWAP there. This is uh, again that VWAP. Uh, not that 50 SMA, changed it back to VWAP, but off the open holds that VWAP, a nice little acceleration off of VWAP through that $5 mark as well. We held that five uh, within 10 pennies, it would seem, on that, uh, on that final test, on that final attempt to come back in there. And now we're pushing back to the upside there on CXAI. Um, Okay, so uh, all right, well, I'll, ch I'll check one more before passing back to back to Adara. Uh, who is this? Um, Frank Boso talking about SMCI. So let's take a quick look at SMCI. All right, so yeah, SMCI uh, trading below VWAP there. Same kind of reversion uh, pullback that we've had, we've seen on a lot of the chips. Uh, looking kind of similar here. So the break down of, uh, of, uh, of some of that morning momentum, a little bit of a slowdown. Has us pulling back quite, uh, quite significantly back towards this opening, uh, some of these opening prices. But it seems as of right now, we're holding above fr uh, Thursday, uh, sorry, Wednesday and Thursday's highs uh, after, as of right now on SMCI. What's NVIDIA up to? Is NVIDIA holding anything interesting? So, okay, so it did kind of come down into this, these levels we were talking about from last uh, Wednesday and Thursday. We're holding that as of right now, that 180, uh, sorry, that 891, 892-ish area. Um, just underneath this 900. So let's see what we do with that 900 on NVDA. This, uh, this Google L short might be coming in as well. Let's take a quick look at the 15 minute to see. All right, that uh, 155 half, maybe something, a little bit of a lick grab as well. Let's see if we kind of come back down uh, to the downside here, but relative strength nonetheless happening on Google L. A little bit of counter trend happening as well, <laughs> how I'm kind of trading it, but. I might be looking for too much. I'll stay as nimble as possible, though. Yeah, it looks a little to? bit rangy, honestly. When you pulled up in the 15, my eyes went. It's a little, like, it's a little rangy, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I sure. mean, I, I like that's that's not. I like ranges, so that's why yeah. I was like, oh, 
It's a nice look there. But yeah, less of a nice look is Microsoft. Um, we're still holding below this 424.30, 424.40 area beautifully. So I'm staying in this for now. I did change my out though. Initially, I was trying to get out of this, like I said, way lower than I think is feasible at, the, at this moment in time, which is going to be that 423.25, 423.30. Eh, that was, a, that was a dream that we had to wake up from, uh, pour some cold water on ourselves and keep going. So I think now initially I had it, or not initially, after that I had it at 423.85. We got two cents away from that, didn't make it. Now we're at 423.92. So I think it's a realistic area. Obviously not as much profit as we wanted, but it, it, it's something. And I think, you know, as we were just saying, you have to be a little bit adaptable. Andrew Phillips was asking me about my stop loss on Tesla. Uh, it was, I think I'm going to mention this a little bit earlier, but it was that I want to see what we did at that break at that 171.26. Initially, we held this pretty well. Then we broke below it. So I got out. So that's okay. We did take some profit on here. But like I, I said, I should have been a lot rangier on this. And it's like, Adara, you consider yourself a range trader. You Sometimes you have to stick with, with what you're good at and what you're comfortable with. And I mean, shout out to the podcast this weekend as well. Check out our markets podcast. They had Canal Desai on from Bulls of, oh, yeah. on Wall Street last week. And... Uh, I guess last week over the weekend. And yeah. what Kanal had to say is like, whatever strategy you think you, you have as a trader, make sure you're really trying to develop it and, and hone it and figure out your skill set. And I think that's something I'm trying to do a little bit more. So when I saw this Tesla range pulling up, that should have been all I was focusing on. So I'm a little bit disappointed in myself, but all you can do is keep marching higher. That, that's one little thing. And so I'm not gonna let that get me down. We did take some profit on that. So trying not to be too discouraged there. Also, NVIDIA, yeah, like I said, I, I, I was interested in that 9 EMA rejection. Should have taken it earlier off that. Uh, I'm going to pull up the one minute again because NVIDIA is a one minute type um, name for me. We did actually get that move that I kind of wanted to the downside here, but I didn't take it. Um, and yeah, I mean, NVIDIA is hard to trade. As Frank Boso said in the chat there, NVIDIA is your nemesis. Uh, why, you know, don't, don't trade it. And I was like, that's, that's true to some extent, but I find... If I trade this one on the one minute and I watch it like a hawk, I've actually had some success with this. This is my best name by far on Friday. So, I mean, I think the thing is, too, is I'm trying to, although I do totally see what you mean, like, it's a very uh, bamboozling name to borrow Sharifism. It's definitely a name that can give you a little bit of strife. But that being said, it is something that I don't want to completely write it off just because it is NVIDIA, right? If it's continuing to show levels that I like, I, I want to be able to, to give a little bit of credence to that and look for some opportunities. So right now, not seeing anything here, but I am going to keep an eye on it for some potential one-minute scalps. Also, we got out of Microsoft, so I am pleased as punch. Looks like if I had stuck with that 482.85 area, I would have eventually gotten it, but you did have to be a little bit nimble and switch things around. So we're in the money on MSFT. This was longer than I normally like staying in a trade. We initially got involved in this at 11.26, but it ended up working out here. I don't have any reason or impetus to get back into this because I feel like it has been a little bit, you know, kind of chop and turn, not even in a steady range way. The one reason, actually speaking of range, is the one way I would get involved in this is on the one minute. We have been actually holding this 423.85-esque to 424.30-esque area really well. It looks like we're going to break down from this, but if we don't, I'm going to get involved because I actually think that might be a better opportunity for me right now. Also, AMD turning around a little bit here. Curling nice, nice back short. to the upside. This is really interesting on the one minute. We had that 182.50 area, previous resistance, now kind of curling up into support and coming into to confluence and in, you know, kind of hanging out here with this, where this 9 EMA is more or less. So I think this 182.50 area continues to be interesting. Not something I have a read on right now, but yeah, AMD always definitely one to keep one's eye on. So, um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what else happens here. Also, um, LVS. Elon earlier was mentioning LVS. So let's see um, how we're doing in Las Vegas Sands here. Um, let's see. Three oh three percent to the upside. Let's switch to the five minute chart on this. This is yeah. This is a nice looking volume's not bad either. One point one two mil. So definitely nothing to, to scoff at or sneeze at here. We had. It's not, it's not a perfect kind of flag pull pattern, but it's certainly a bullish look. We had these two five-minute candles more or less forming this pull, but a lot more wicks than actual candle body to keep an eye on. And this is off the, the first two candles of the day, so 9.30 and 9.35. Then we kind of start forming these higher lows, higher highs. So it's a nice look. I think making a higher high above this 53 area would be nice to show the continued momentum in this name. But right now, not, not a bad look at all on LVS. Let's look at the daily chart, because I believe you mentioned the daily as well there, Elon. Yeah, the, the daily on this is, is really nice. And I mean, also, I like that we have this 
bounce here, more or less on that, that previous area that we had some chop and churn here uh, in January, that 50, 55, and then even more so that the 50 area was a previous area of resistance, right? I like resistance becoming support. That's one of the biggest things I like keeping an eye on. Right now, though, it looks like we're getting a bit rangy. I think we need to break above that 50, 350, not just on the intraday chart, but on the daily as well to show some continued momentum for LVS. Uh, yeah, I think right now Microsoft continuing to, to kind of be rangy in a way I like. That's my, my best look right now. And if AMD wants to keep stutter stepping to the upside, I might have some plays there as well. But it looks like Google is dropping like it's hot. I mean, the market is uh, market is coming in there, Adara. So I think uh, I think finally maybe Google uh, following in step. Maybe that beta has uh, has caught along, and we're going to be moving in step with uh, with the market. But uh, still patiently waiting there. Uh, I, I did I do like that uh, that short you had on on softy kind of uh, below that 425, below that view up as well. I kind of did pull it up there. Um, so. Decent, uh, de decent short there. I like that. Market's coming into the downside as well. You can see the ES making fresh lows, the NQ attempting for fresh lows. We did just make a fresh low there on this current 15-minute candle here. Uh, so let's see how far we can get here. Uh, I know some people in the chat, they were like, okay, can we go lower? I know that uh, Ponzi was saying, can, can you take me lower? <laughs> so I'm going to assume that, uh, that some of us are sitting short here. Um, the shorts are working as of right now. So let's see how much longer they kind of, uh, they kind of come into fruition. Apple, wow, that little quadunk happens off that 170. Oh boy, I was not there for that one. I'm curious to know uh, when uh, or what the tape would have looked like right here. Look at that wick, uh, and then a wick, another one, and then instantly dumps about a full point, 170 to 169 halves, so 169, actually half a point, sorry, half a point there, uh, dump on the Apple, but making fresh lows maybe on uh, on the ES for sure, on the NQ almost, but uh, Apple almost there, 169.48, so only about 20 pennies away from uh, away from that one. Let's see if this kind of trend continues uh, to the downside here on some of these large caps here. So. Um, Let's take a quick check as well. We saw we saw Softy, we saw Apple. What is Nvidia up to? Oh boy, making some fresh lows as well, or trying to to the downside. So we talked about some, okay. So as I'm as we're talking, I think it's going for that uh, going for that low right now. Only about a only about a point a point or so away from that low previous week low at that 892. So do we break prior uh, prior week low? I know that behavior is going to be a little distinctly different when it comes to Nvidia because take a look at this. You pull it up on the weekly chart. You pull up Nvidia on the weekly chart. Look how strong we've been, Adara. We've been back to back uh, back to back greens since we broke out of this consolidation off the 500. So we go 500 to 1,000 test. Can't really get to 1,000. You failed the 975. Hello, psychological levels. Uh, so quarter below the thou, you kind of can't really get through. And then you print your first red week. Coming in today, we're breaking or trying to break previous week low for the first time. Well, maybe not the first time, but a little distinctly different behavior as the candles are red, back-to-back uh, -back reds on the weekly. So we did break uh, prior bar low on the weekly before, but then caught right back up. So that, that happened at that 700. Where else did it really happen? Nowhere else, just that 700. So we kind of we kind of grabbed that 700. We ripped all the way to a thou, and now we're breaking that uh, uh, I guess prior bar low on the weekly for the first uh, first time in a, in a few weeks on Nvidia. Let's see if we kind of catch a sell to the downside here. Maybe some relief of the trend we've been having over the past few months here. So let's take a quick measure of how many candles we have. 10 bars, so roughly 70 days worth of green. And then last week and this week, as of right now, printing a little bit of red on uh, on the weekly for for uh, for the first time on Nvidia. So um, some distinct behavior, it would seem. Let's see where we where that behavior kind of carries the market. We know that the NQ and the ES are attempting to make fresh lows, so a little heaviness to the downside, it would seem. Let me take a quick look at Apple as well. Apple kind of being that uh, uh, market or former market leader now it's uh now it's softy and uh we got a fresh bunch of uh, top co constituents. I don't know how much longer Apple is going to stay involved with uh, with that list, but uh, we, Apple is coming down to some of these lows as well. So weekly has already been kind of uh, kind of uh, lackluster 
on Apple, as you can see, this is the same kind of weekly chart, but looking distinctly different from some of the chips. So let's take a quick look at SMH and uh, see what, uh, what our buddy SMH is up to. So SMH looking a little bit similar to Nvidia, but uh, holding, up, holding up on its own there as uh, it has had red weeks in the, uh, on the way, but holding well within trend there on SMH. So Nvidia, fresh lows, maybe that'll bring us further to the downside there. So Google coming back into that one, uh, 154 halves. Let's see if this shelf kind of holds, right? It's a little distinct, this shelf that's been there. Uh, 154 halves, you can see we lick grabbed it like once, uh, hold it twice, thrice, and we're holding a little bit of a channel, 154 halves to 155 halves, and we've tested both ends of the channel uh, about once, twice. Now going for that third time as of right now, will that support hold? Is the market being this heavy uh, going to have any effect on this 154 half on Google? Are we going to take a little bit of a pullback? Uh, I like to look at retracements there. Uh, um, we were talking about retracements a little bit last week. So this is about five points, five, uh, five and some chains. So 520 is the range of that, uh, of that drive off the open. So let's just round that to about five. So let's see how much of a pullback we've had so far if we measure from the highs down to the lows. So about a point. So it's only pulled back about a fifth. So it hasn't even had a 30% retracement, let alone, let alone a 50% retracement. We are holding that upper, uh, that upper quartile of this strength on Google. So relatively strong indeed on, uh, on Google. So let's see what we have in store with some of, this, uh, some of this strength to the downside or weakness, depending on how, how you're looking at it. It's all about perspective. You have strong sellers or strong buyers that you're defining with the word strength or uh, just a strong move in any general direction. But uh, yeah, let's see, let's see what we got on here. I'm just watching Google right now. Yeah, I mean, Google, yeah, Google's an interesting, Google's an interesting one. I still can't get over that 70 days of upside for NVIDIA on those weekly candles. That, that's a wild look yeah. there. Also, yeah, I did get back involved in Tesla, which I want to talk about because I did see some mention of that in the chat. I got back involved in this. It's going to be super scalpy. I, we held this 70, 170, 115 area insanely well. Like, I was watching this, and I, we held it really well. I was going to be getting out if we got below that 171. We have it. And also, I'm being a lot scalpier this time. I honestly, if we get to 170, 140s, I'll be pleased as punch. I do have a beak winner set there, uh, and it looks like we are out of Tesla, so... I, I am aware this is a lot scalpier, but it was something that worked for me. But also what works for everyone is listening to Neil's lesson of the day, which you're going to be having now over at yeah. that desk. Welcome to your lesson of the day. It's so important, and you'll hear this time and time again. You should always, always marry the stock that you're trading. You should be stubborn about it. You should stick to your guns. No matter what, do not move away from that one idea that you thought was going to be the best one. Why wouldn't you marry a stock? You like it, the setup looked great, you courted it in the pre-market, and then you determined you were going to trade it for the entire day no matter what. I don't care what it did. It's April Fool's Day. Of course you're not supposed to marry your stocks. And you probably heard that term like a million times. Don't get married to a trade. Don't get married to a stock. Now you want to go investing, you know what, in the investing game, I got no issues with it, man. Sometimes you believe in the company, you hold it for the long term. Look at Mr. Buffett and Apple. But when it comes to trading, you've got to accept that sometimes if you marry to that stock, there are a lot of reasons that things can go bad. And it's not all obvious. Now, clearly, if you want to get married to a stock long or short and it goes the other direction, you're just going to lose. So that's bad. But there's other things that can go wrong when you are married to an idea, married to a stock, and cannot get away from it. There's a huge opportunity cost. And I want to first deal with the most obvious reason that you shouldn't be too tied down to one stock or to one idea. What if it's wrong? That's plain and simple. So like, the easy answer for this is every time you get into a trade, there should be, this is why I want to look at it, this is why I want to get in, this is why I want to get out, and this is where I'm going to be wrong. Now, once that happens, you've got to be able to go, get away from the stock. However, I understand there are going to be times when, okay, you get out of a certain trade short, but you still like that stock for another setup. So that's fine. But I want to give you, a, I want to give you an example here of where you just 
have to stop. So AMD and a lot of the chip names in the, you know, today that we're talking about it, you know, it, it's actually up 1%. It was in a nice consolidation range. You had a 183 on the daily, which was just an absolute brick wall. So I'm thinking, look, short off of a resistance level because that's just been the good level, right? Okay, well, if it's been off that top multiple times and I like the short there, Alrighty then, we're gonna go in short. But when it runs that stop, notice what you don't see. Now, if you're married to the notion of, I'm just gonna trade AMD, I'm bearish. Let's just marry this stock. There is nothing after it breaks that key price level where I'm getting, where I wanted to short in front. There's nothing indicating weakness. The three minute chart, it's all green. It eventually runs over 2% higher before it makes a turnaround. Now this is the thing, if you like to short off of that level or just in general on AMD, if you're married to that notion, it eventually would have worked out if you just kind of go short all the way up. But that's not the question you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself when you marry a trade, not would it have worked out if I just stuck with it the whole day and then it comes back. But what happens if it didn't turn? Now, I can, you can look at this move and say, well, I'm starting fading at 183, fade, 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 fade. Eventually, it breaks back down, so any average price you have in here is going to end up working when it gets back down into 181. You will have made a big winning trade. There's no question about that. But what happens if it continues higher and you see 190? Because eventually, you're going to have an out. Now, whether or not you're, it's, it's a reasonable one or it's a stop on your account uh, as a day trader, it's a daily stop loss or... Whatever it might be, that's going to be a catastrophic loss, even if it ends up peeling. Now, what you can do is wait for it to set up and give you that reason you wanted to get it. You know, like, what is that thing that made you want to go out and court the stock in the first place? The resistance and the sell is at 83? That comes back, you can take that trade. But you've got to understand, it's not just about whether that idea eventually would have worked, because if you get the curl eventually, if a stock you're going long and you like the long and you just keep going long, 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 and it bounces, great. But you've got to look at what happened if it didn't make that curl and it continued going against me. How big is that loss relative to what I win in that hero bounce or that hero pullback? That's the first thing. But the, more, the even more important reason you don't want to marry a trade or a stock is the opportunity cost. If you are stuck looking at one thing that is not working, you're going to miss something else. And I cannot say this enough, because at that exact moment when AMD wasn't working, I, I went on over to the other stock that I liked short. I liked Tesla short at 178. It never gave you that setup, but I was bearish on Tesla. So the lower high, it showed you 176. Now, obviously, if I wanted to short up this resistance level, it never really gave me an opportunity. But if you know, when we got away from AMD and went back over to something else that was setting up, if you stick with AMD, fine, it eventually works, but the opportunity cost of staring at the wrong thing, you might miss a better trading opportunity. That is the reason to get away from stocks that are not working because that opportunity cost sometimes is even bigger because eventually AMD worked. But without ever going against you, Tesla gave you a better setup. So sometimes that's what it's all about. And I'll give you another one about not marrying stocks because it's, it's so easy to say, well, look at that AMD that didn't work out and then jump over to Tesla that did. But what happens when you're married to a trade that is working? Well, you might think, well, the, what's the harm in that? What's the harm in being married to a trade that's working, Neil? If you liked Intel long, which I did today, didn't get the breakout trade, that's fine. Well, didn't get the dip buy into 44. That's a fail. Let me slap the fail on myself for that. I look back and it's like, Neil, you like to dip by at 44 and you didn't take that? Come on, Neil. But you missed that trade. The breakout off the high the day before, that would have worked. The consolidation off the even, that also works. Like the third best long still works out. But if I'm married to the idea of Intel being a good long, then what happens is on the way back in, I'm too fixated on it. When it couldn't hold that same breakout 45 and showed relative weakness, Jump away from that. So yes, it worked, but it doesn't mean it's the best thing for you to be in. Why? Because you should always look for something better. 
Now, if, you're, if, if I like that chip name and the chip names were strong, I showed you that AMD on this day was moving well, and I liked an Intel long, and it was at the top of my list, Intel long. But none of that crap matters if Micron is stronger. Does it really matter? Like, who cares? Like, so what? Suck it up, Buttercup. You liked, AMD, you liked AMD short. I liked Intel long. Whether it worked or not, Micron's a stronger stock. That's just the reality. So once I observe that you can't hold 45, you can't hold VWAP in, in Intel, well, you can go back on my list and say, well, Neil, you said Intel long. Stick to Intel long. No, you can't do that. You've got to be mentally agile in this game. If you like the chips long, there might be a better opportunity. And if you have to scan a bunch of different chip names, you look at, I could have looked at NVIDIA, I could have looked at Marvell, ARM, all of those names. And you come out with the fact that Micron is holding VWAP and it's up 7%, and it's the best one. So you pivot to that. It's that simple. Now, does it suck to your ego sometimes when your number one idea isn't necessarily the best trade out there? Sure it does, but the market doesn't care. The market's going to do what it's going to do independent of whatever your ideas were when you sat down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the positions that you have. It doesn't matter the ideas you have. The stocks are going to do what they're going to do. And if you marry to even something that's working, if you're unwilling to then find something better, then you're just going to be giving up potential profits. And on the backside, if you like a certain long and you end up in the weaker one in the group, well, you'll be buying dips into a weaker name. So especially when you're talking about individual sectors, if you are an equity trader, you have a million different things that you can trade. Just in the chips alone, you have a half a dozen reasonably good names that you could be day trading. So if I like Intel one day or like AMD the other, I've got to be able to pivot if Micron or Nvidia are stronger and are better setups. And that's what it means to not marry a trade. It's not just about getting away from losing trades. It's also having the flexibility to walk over to something which is trading better or better for your theory. Again, there's nothing wrong with you have to have an idea. There is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a game plan. But you've got to always ask yourself, if that plan is incorrect, where is my out? If I'm going to get back into the thing that wasn't working, what is my very specific reason for doing so? And before you even do that, is there something better that I can be looking at in that moment that sets up for my trading style? That's it. You got to have a plan. You've got to be able to adjust that plan. And one of the easiest things to do is look for that relative strength and weakness. If you like a chip name long, or just in general you like the chips to the long side, be willing to check for another opportunity that could be the best of the group, even if you didn't pick the right one. You always want to be in the right stocks when you are actively trading. And sometimes that requires you getting away from that thing that you love and going to the nicer, sexier move that's happening right next to you. But if you don't look, you're not going to find it. So do not marry your stocks. Do not marry your trades. Have an open and flexible mind in trading. You can have conviction, but there's a difference between conviction and stubbornness. And the latter is going to get you into some trouble. That's your lesson of the day. Do not marry stocks. Do not marry positions. Just marry a great, fantastic partner, and your life will be great. Yeah, thank you so much to Neil, Neil for that one. And what an ending there as well to end that lesson of the day. And I think, yeah, honestly, really, really relatable. Like I, I for a while, struggled with trading Eli Lilly, which is just not a, an easy stock to trade in a good day. So I think, yeah, like getting unmarried to these stocks is um, sometimes divorcing yourself mentally from those stocks or those positions can be very hard, but very uh, worth worthwhile yes yeah, so thank you very much to that lesson for the day before we get to our lesson how are you doing with uh google uh it's uh, it's it's coming along there uh like, like uh kind of kind of going back to what neil said i don't want to get too married to, to to this position here right um but uh yeah if you're in a in an unhealthy relationship uh with uh, with the stock you might want to look for that uh you might want to call up your lawyer and uh look for those divorce papers to 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 get started and uh Maybe I'm not at that point yet with uh, with Google, but I was at that point with a couple other names on uh, on the Intel. I was like, I was like, oh damn, I don't like the way uh, the way she tr she's treating me here. Um, Intel's going sideways. I'm just gonna get rid of that one. But uh, Google holding up as of right now. SMH kind of a uh, bit of a curl here on the on the on the chips. You can see that in Q3 
you taking a little bit of a breather uh, back to the upside as well. Um, let's take a quick look at NVIDIA. Did NVIDIA bounce off of that previous week low that we were watching? And as of right now, it's just a bit of maybe more of a consolidation. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is totally bounced off of that level that uh, unless and until we can kind of, kind of clear this 900, which happens to be this opening range low as well. Uh, I think that uh, we're still kind of well, well uh, poised for the downside here, even with the NQ and the ES catching a little bit of a bid here. Let's see how far we can, uh, we can get. Uh, people saying Obi was married to Amazon. Yes, I was. I was, and then uh, not 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 as uh, not as as much every uh, anymore. I still see her every now and then, you know. So uh, yeah. it's it wasn't a, it wasn't a bad breakup, but uh, when, when it's in play, I'm definitely down to down to have some fun. Let's just say that it was an amicable divorce, is what you're saying there with Amazon. Yes, there you go. That's that, that's awesome. That's what we always want, right? Um, that was yeah, that was pretty good there. I I appreciated that. I think I'm going to, um, you know what, actually, no, I'm going to stay at this Microsoft. I was going to divorce Microsoft. Microsoft hasn't really given me a reason to leave. My thesis for re-entering this was this beautiful range. I initially got involved. We were holding that 424.20 area pretty well. Then we popped back up into that 424.60, but we couldn't hold it. And this was a level I was interested in earlier because that earlier pop. Now it's also in confluence with VWAP, which makes me even more interested in it, interested in it as a level. I added at 40s. I'm cool staying in this trade, so um, we're going to have to see how this goes. I want to take some profit at 424, 423.80, and then saving a piece for the dream back at that earlier very beautiful bounce area at that 423.20. So I'm going to have to get all of my little profit takers set as we get ready for round two of the lesson. Uh, we are talking about different trading at different times of day. All week, and I think also that's pretty interesting with regards to what Neil just had as, as for the lesson of the day, if you want to connect to that, right? Sometimes a stock can look really good in the earlier in the morning. So Obi was just talking about having to divorce from Intel because Intel had some opportunities earlier in the day, but maybe not so much later, right? So I think, you know, it's a, it's a pretty apt lesson of the day for what we have to talk about uh, this week and today, especially, which is going to be in trading in the morning, it looks like trying to key in a order. I accidentally pulled up the Google Chrome help key, but now we're, oh, now I just pulled down all my charts. I am not the most tech savvy human in the universe. That's okay. Um, but for now, we are, um, I need to figure out how to do this where you like pull everything down and then you find it all again. That's cool. For now, we're gonna talk about the lesson. Um, and the lesson is trading the open. So, um, Basically, one, one big thing with morning trading is uh, it does, when you're talking about morning trading or trading the open, you are referring to trading that occurs within the first hour of the trading day. It's going to be like 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. And one of the benefits of this strategy is that it allows traders to capitalize on the volatility present during that time of day, especially ahead of some of the slower action that you often find during the midday. And why the morning matters, there's a couple reasons. You have more volume in the morning, so the volume at market open does tend to be some of the strongest of the day, which can give traders lots of opportunities to get involved in liquid stocks. If an asset or an index has a lower volume off the open, it can suggest a lack of interest in the asset or market that day. Direction. Also really important here, the direction that a stock moves immediately off the open can give market participants a sense uh, as to whether investors or traders are feeling bullish or bearish heading into the session. So it gives you a little bit of a vibe for the sentiment. And also levels really important here as well because action off the open can give traders a sense of um, levels uh, that could be important for the asset during the session. So early levels of support in resistance. Furthermore, the opening price of an asset is often used for indicators like pivots, which we know Sharif's been using a lot. So those pivots do look at those um, opening prices of the previous day, right? So always things to keep in mind. But as we just talked about, you know, too earlier, sometimes these levels can change throughout the day. So what you have is your opening level can help give you guidance for the trade, but it's not always going to be relevant throughout the entire day. So I know Intel was, was one example of that too for that, that short um, earlier. Are there any times that you find like volume being uh, really particularly strong or weak heading into the morning can impact how, how you trade? Or yeah, um, uh, definitely. I think... Uh Again, off the open, volume volume is huge, uh, and you can get these directional moves. And again, going back to the example that we've been using here, uh, a lot of the market there 
uh, was, uh, was quite strong off of the open. Google as well. Uh, same thing with Intel. So uh, we can use Intel because I did, uh, did trade that one uh, to the upside. So Intel quite aggressive. You can see the volume kind of coming in right off of the open. One of the, one of the highest uh, volume bars as well. Some of that volume being, being the opening print, of course. And then uh, you can see that how the volume kind of dies off. Uh, after that morning session. So yeah, I think it, it, it plays on a part of, uh, of just uh, more participants off of the open. Maybe people, got, people have, uh, have lunch or other, other um, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, things to do after the open. I know that uh, it, on the east, on the west coast, uh, the, the schedule is such that um, the market actually clo uh, opens um, around uh, 630 that's true. 6 30 a.m and closes around 1 p.m so it's like a lot of people what i'm finding out now is that uh is uh, on on the west end they'll trade the they'll trade the morning the opening session and then they'll go to work right after so it's like you trade the opening session for a couple hours and it's like by 8 30 work hasn't really started you've traded two hours into the open and uh, a lot of a lot of these uh, a lot of the opening drives and even the reversions, you can see that uh, uh, a lot more often than not just happen in the first 15 minutes to an hour. So I think a lot of people are taking advantage of that, and then you see that volume kind of die down. So definitely a lot more volume in the morning session um, overall. I would say now if something else is something has a catalyst, something else is like uh, doing like a move, um, maybe sure it, it could be doing some sustained volume throughout the day. But uh, from what I've seen is a lot of the volume uh, comes in off the open and then going into the close as well. The opening print and the closing print uh, doing a, a decent chunk of the daily volume uh, as well. So I like, I like the open for, for, the, for that kind of volatility. You can kind of see it here, uh, strong off the open. Um, I think I took like a, I took like a pre-market or a previous, uh, previous day break here on, on the Intel. It doesn't really follow through, take the short back down, but uh, a lot of opportunity as well. Yeah, so that, that volume and that momentum kind of dies off and I'm like all right well what's the probability of the move kind of continuing with that volume falling off as uh, uh, the way it does and then you can see how aggressive the move off the open was so um, that kind of comes in but yeah I think volume is definitely a good indicator one of my top indicators to watch um, uh, regardless of the time but uh, one of the top indicators indeed yeah. off the open yeah, thank you so much for going over that too. And I think once again, not not to continue to harp on this, but I think that Intel example is so cool because it's a good example of playing it two different directions. A, using the momentum in the morning and then B, using that kind of early, later sell-off, right? So right. I think that that's definitely a very cool example for sure. And I'm also curious, I know you also went to that trading summit last week. Was that something where they, they talked a little bit about, because I know you mentioned the East Coast, learning how people trade in the East Coast um, in the morning a little bit more. Was that something where you got a bit of a sense too in terms of how different people trade in terms of times of the day or different indicators or yeah i think i think it was a great opportunity to kind of uh network and talk to talk to other traders and see how they kind of trade and yeah i, I got a bit of it from that where it's like okay well uh, traders um in different time zones might be trading differently a lot of traders might just be trading um uh, the opening session if they if they have uh if they work full-time or even part-time as well so yeah it was a, it was a different uh, definitely an interesting look but uh yeah yeah, talking talking to different different traders definitely brings in that perspective of like, okay, what are other people kind of doing, um, and uh, how are they how are they thinking about trading, and what's their perspective as well? I think I, I really like that part of uh, part of going to some of those events. Yeah, that's yeah. That, that's very cool, and uh, thank you for the insight on that. And also, some people here, including Easy Trader in the chat, agreeing with you with regards to that, or, or just saying, oh, they relate to that with regards to the East Coast trading. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. You can have a job and you can do some trading in the morning there. So, East Coast certainly, uh, as long as you're willing to wake up early, it's a pretty nice opportunity. Also, worth noting, if you're going to take advantage of those morning trading opportunities, a couple more factors. So, the volatility of early trading can bring greater excitement and opportunities for profit, but it also can bring about a little bit uh, more risk. So, trends and directions can be susceptible to change. You know, that Intel example, again, another really good one. So, you want to make sure you are prepared to leave a trade early or switch directions if need be. And that can be through taking profit or exiting with a loss as long as you have everything set up, right? So make sure you figure out and set your profit taking and stop loss levels right when you enter the trade so that you can take advantage of and fail to be swept up in the sudden price movements that are common during boarding trading.
You also want to make sure that you're aware of any economic releases, Fed speaks, or earnings calls, if applicable, that are scheduled during the first half hour or hour of the trading day. So some economic data, like uh, certain PMI releases or consumer confidence numbers, are usually scheduled for about 9.45 or 10 a.m., so there's certainly things to keep an eye on. Today, we actually had two PMI releases. One was uh, S&P Global PMI that came out 9.45, and then we had ISM coming out at 10, so those are certainly things to keep an eye on, and Sean was, was letting everybody know about those coming up, too, because they are things that can impact how the market moves and certainly always things to, to be privy of and be aware of. Also, too, I think with regards to some of these earnings calls, I know we had CCL report, uh, they usually report in the morning and then have their um, earnings call around 10. I know you I know you traded CCL last week, I believe. Is that something yeah. that when you're in these names that have those uh, midday or morning earning calls, is that something you have to be aware of and there are certain ways that you like prepare your position, like changing stop losses or or where you're gonna um, enter or exit with regards to that kind of info? Or? I, think, I think it's definitely um, uh, one to be aware of. Uh, I think, what was it, last earnings season? Uh, if I remember correctly, it was also CCL, um, and I didn't know that they they uh, they kind of have their uh, the investors meeting in the in the opening session, and I did uh, was trading it uh, off off of the open, and I was like, okay, well, um, what's uh, what's the sudden kind of volatility? It was pretty crazy. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, they they might uh, have their um, Earnings a little later than uh, later than other uh, other uh, tickers in the market. So I think it's just something something to consider, something to be wary of. That uh, yeah, anybody can say something or anything during the meeting that can cause and bring in volatility. So um, yeah, if if I think if you're aware of that, you might you might consider putting your stop at a different place, maybe a little tighter, maybe a little wider. Really depends on. Uh, I think it's really subjective on as to like the situation and how you trade and what you might be trading. But I. I I would if if it was if it was me in that case, um, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna trade this, uh, which I don't think I, I don't think I necessarily would, um, uh, seeing as. Uh there could be that kind of volatility. I would rather kind of react to react to whatever might might be being said or that initial earnings reaction as well. But uh, yeah, no, I think it, it definitely does play uh, a role in uh, how you want to kind of stay nimble in the trade if you are trading while certain things like that are going on in the ticker. Yeah, that that, that makes sense. Yeah, thank thank you for for going over that. And I think one thing too is this time CCL to be still at that 10 a.m. earnings call, and it was something I was aware of when I was sitting at the big desk. Because I think this is the first time that I've been at the big desk through one of the I guess more major earnings calls that's happened during the day. But honestly, like we we didn't really have much of a move that I saw. Again, I wasn't trading it. Um, on that earnings call, right? So it's always something to be aware of, but not always something that's going to, to I guess, move the market. So thank you uh, for, for your insight and in that as someone who's kind of uh, traded that name during that time because Carnival, certainly, I'm going to take you for a bit of a, a roller coaster ride there. Um, kind of a weird analogy. Or I guess uh, taking you for a cruise ride. Yeah, uh, taking I, you for a cruise. Sense, but, but yeah, a little bit more apt there. But certainly, you, you have to be aware of that earnings call. So uh, interesting look there. Also, I'm out of the Microsoft short. I've said this multiple times, patience is absolutely not my virtue, and I think I'm still trying to work on striking that perfect balance between watching for, for any movement or any bamboozlement and just plain flat out getting out too early. Not sure how I struck it this time. I was happy I stayed in this because initially I was going to get out before uh, before the lesson of the day, but I was like, Adara, we haven't, we're, we're hanging out really nicely below that VWAP area, below that uh, 424.69, so just stay patient, stay nimble. I ended up staying in. I had a planned profit taker 424. We got it. Uh, another one at 423.80. Now, my last piece of the dream was initially saved for 423.30. It's like if you look at this, this has been a nice little bottom for the stock a couple times, right? But the thing is, things can change. So I noticed we were picking up a little bit at that 423.80, and we picked up. I mean, not, not viciously, but we picked up well enough that I was a little concerned. We got all the way up to 424, we rejected, I got out at 423.90, so I ended up taking out 50 cents for the rest of that position. This is um, my strongest name of the day, by a decent amount here on M to the S to the F to the T. So uh, I was pretty happy with this, and honestly, this has just been, again, my, my points of entry not the best, and I've talked about this a lot. This is one of the things I think I struggle with the most, is getting in at the appropriate point of entry, and then having the patience to see it through. I think getting back in this short, I should have been a little bit more patient and, and waiting to see what we did at 424.40 instead of getting involved at this 424.20. Now in terms of the exit, we're continuing to drop lower. So it's like Adara, you could have stayed in, but you know what, woulda, coulda, shoulda. 
I did what I did, and I'm going to hopefully learn from this opportunity. Happy I had the three big winners and ready to see what else the market has to give me. Uh, also, AMD, I saw a, a couple interesting comments here in AMD in the chat. Uh, I think AMD, a really nice move here, uh, move back to the upside. I think this is the area I believe that Obi was looking at earlier, that 181. 50, 130 area where we had a little bit of a trough and then continued to curl to the upside. I was looking at this, but I should have been looking a lot harder because that I like that 18250 hold here around the 90 MA. And I mean, we've had one, two, I guess if we count this doji, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven five minute candles to the upside. This is more than half an hour of Greensville for AMD. <laughs> Shout out to Sharif. So I think this is a really nice look here. We did hold VWAP incredibly well, broke above it. No problem. Yeah, honestly, this is, we're, we're, I think it might, we might be looking for eight candles of the upside here. I, I think could be some dip opportunities, but I'm not seeing any right now. I'm just talking about 184. Right now, we're, we're zooming towards 184.50. Areas I'll be watching are what we do here at 184.75, because that was that earlier little area of support. And I mean, look at that wick to the downside. Then that earlier pop of 185.27 will be another area, just because I like looking at previous areas of support and resistance to see what stocks do there. Also, Tesla getting a little five minute doji here that's pretty interesting. This is kind of in between the previous support and resistance levels I drew at that 172 and 172.40. I wanna watch what we do here. I honestly, I got back involved in this long and I mean to say I left early is probably an understatement, but that's okay. I had to scalp out because I was, you know, we lost a little bit in this trade earlier, so I wanted to get back involved. I saw that hold, but I ended up scalping it because I didn't want to get involved just because I lost out in the earlier trade. So it's all about balance, and I think it's also about, as Neil was saying earlier too, you don't want to get married to a stock, and if you want to get back involved in a name you lost on earlier or traded earlier in general, you have to think of your reasons why. So I think, for me, I had the reasons why, but I was possibly a little bit too hung up on the fact that I did lose in it earlier, and that's why I gave myself a little bit less room to run. But you know what? Learning, going to store that lesson in my brain and wait for some more opportunities. Anyone see anything interesting moving here today? Let us know. I think there's definitely lots of opportunities on the horizon. In the Monday that initially looked a little bit ho-hum, how is your Google going? Uh, it's going sideways. Nothing too, too crazy there. But uh, something uh, worth mentioning there, I saw somebody, uh, some people mentioning it in the chat as well. Um, DJT, straight to the downside here. So a little bit of continuation off of, uh, off of last week's levels. Now, I, I did have, uh, I guess I did have kind of Reddit and DJT on watch. Um, Reddit a little bit more. Reddit wasn't really doing what I was looking for, so I moved away from it. But oh boy, does that DJT come in? And uh, you can see here, um, uh, take, a, take a quick look, look left at uh, some of those prices that we've had uh, over the past few days. So you had that really strong day uh, when uh, I think it was, uh, uh, when was this? This was last Monday, right? So Monday, you had that strength coming in, follow through next day, kind of coasts sideways, consolidates, holds that, uh, holds that 65 mark with a low of 56s. And coming in today, you just slam right into the 56, continuous selling, like back to back, no real, uh, no real relief here. You, you have one green candle on the 15 minute that pretty much is an inside bar for the previous candle right there. We've only made lower highs and lower lows here, accelerating to the downside. Now 50 breaking as well on DJT. So what a beautiful short here uh, to the downside. Hasn't really shown you anything else really. No real signs of a bounce. Steady grind to the downside here on DJT. So have you guys been involved uh, in the DJT short? I'm curious to know as that name has been straight to the downside here. Let's take a quick look at uh, Reddit as well. Uh, Reddit, yeah, wow. Okay, so kind of uh, kind of showing a similar similar set of weakness as well. Um, not as strong uh, to the downside, not as uh, as uh, hard of a flush to the downside as DJT, but definitely kind of rejecting that 50 mark here. So a little bit of a continuation off of last week's uh, last week's flush that we had. You can see Thursday, uh, sorry, it was Wednesday, and then Thursday. Uh, continuing to the downside after a strong push, can't really get through 75s, and we're 
kind of pushing back below. I think 47 was the IPO price, and we're trading below that IPO price as of right now as well. So you can see on this little bit of a bounce that we had on Reddit, you can't even get past opening price. You make a lower high 4690s uh, just underneath that 47, and now we're pushing or attempting back at the at the low a day as of right now on Reddit. So are we going to make fresh lows? I think uh, I think any, anybody and everybody who was long off of that 47 IPO price, as price was above though above those levels for quite some time over the past few few weeks, is a, they're a little underwater in and around some of these prices as uh, all the longs that have uh, that could have possibly bought at any of these prices uh, since I since the IPO open are pretty much uh, mostly underwater there except for maybe some a uh, little bit of this volume that happened. I know that this volume had some R vol as well when we did drop below this 40. Oh, is this a 45? mark yeah so in and around that 45 mark so around these prices uh, I think uh, reddit was doing some some arvo there so all time low on this uh, ticker as of right now is 4420 only about a point and some change away from that on reddit reddit to the downside so is djt so some of these uh, some of these tickers that were uh, uh, nice and interesting over the past couple of weeks, catching a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a breather here to the downside. Let's take a quick look at ARM. What's ARM up to? ARM with the sideways action there. So still holding that 122, 123, 124 area, uh, just doing, doing the sideways dance on ARM. So nothing too crazy happening with, uh, with ARM. I know there was one more. Um, Right, this A Lab IPO that we also had kind of in that uh, in that chip sector as well. Let's see what that one's been up to. So we've we've been selling off off of this 95 uh, test that we had last Tuesday, and uh, kind of a, st a stair step to the downside here. So so today all we've done is uh, bounce off of this 60, 68, 67 mark here, um, maybe in step with uh, with this market bounce as well. So let's see what we got in store here. Market attempting for a little bit of a bounce. I see that chip uh, uh, Intel specifically when I say chip uh, is holding sideways right now. Let's take a quick look at SMH. SMH a little bit of a bounce here. So VWAP, uh, VWAP potentially coming in. 229 is VWAP trading at 228 halves as of right now on SMH. Google L still pretty much sideways, so I'm holding on right now. Nothing too crazy um, here, but uh, what is the next trade? That's kind of what I'm asking myself. I don't really have anything on board, but maybe that DJT reversion, if that if that can come in, uh, as it did, as it is still kind of raging to the downside. Very very strong, uh, distinct behavior, very directional uh, to the downside here on DJT. So I'm I'm closely watching this one now. Have it have it up. So uh, maybe a potential bounce, maybe a potential turn, but we'll have to change some, be some of that behavior uh, to the downside because uh, I don't know where it's going to stop. Yeah, I think it's certainly, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, stuff in different ways that you can look at for sure. I mean, that DJT is certainly like a massive, that was a massive move down. And someone was tell uh, tagging Stock Trader. Thank you for saying this. This came out early today, or which is why I didn't see it, because it was looks like this was published around 11.51. Looks like the reason for this, and I mean, I'm sure this came out earlier, but it's just when I saw it, or when I, I think a lot of these places started publishing this a little more widely. Uh, apparently, Trump Media and Technology Group lost $58 million last year. So that would uh, explain that move down, I think, for sure. They made $4.1 million for the full year, so not a great look hmm. there for uh, okay. DJT, which could explain that, that big driven. sell off. Pardon? So that was a little catalyst driven. Oh yeah, yeah, I think, I think so, okay, right? Okay. Um, in addition to potentially a little bit of sell off from that move last week, it could be a bit of both. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this, this is an interesting uh, move here for sure in a lot of these names. And I think it's a little bit harder to find direction for some things. I mean, clearly DJT is to the downside. There could be a reversion play. But now I'm looking at stuff at like AMD. And I'm like, you know, AMD, what would you like to AMD? Please, please let me know. And I say this because we had this. I initially was going to try going long off this uh, this bounce here, forget it, at the, which should actually be kind of, I guess, a little bit of confluence here, convergence with the 90 MA and VWAP. But if we bounce here at this 183.50s, I don't mind this area because A, it'd be a bounce off previous support, and B, I think you could take it to 184.50. Or not 184, where did we take this earlier? 184.30, right? But then it's like Adara. If you like that level, maybe you should have shorted it off, off of this rejection because we had a couple chances for you to take that bite of the apple and, and take that short of the rejection. So a little bit harder to read for sure. 
we're gonna have to, to keep an eye and see how this happens. If we have this bounce, though, I do want to take it. Because I we had this bounce earlier a couple times, even just on a wick basis of that 183.70, and both times it comes right back up. So I think if we can hold this level, not just because it's view up, but also because it happens to come to confluence with earlier support, I like that look a lot. And then my, my stop would be that 183.11 area where we had a little bit of resistance earlier. And you know what, I actually, actually am gonna get involved in this because I think we're holding this up pretty well. So we're gonna get involved 65s. Um, I kind of a, a random arbitrary level, but I wanted something in between the 70s and the 60s. I don't think I'm gonna get it. This is one of the biggest things that I'm just not decisive enough. I see a level I like and I hem and I haw and I don't get involved. As Sean says, a scared trader is a deficient trader. And I think definitely I was a little bit deficient with the entry. I don't wanna chase. If we come back to that level, I still have my order waiting. I, you know, I, I, I will still say I, I do to, to AMD. So let, let's see, you know, not, not getting married, but certainly interested in a, you know, a summer fling with this stock as we head up into that 184.30 area. That would make me really happy. Uh, yeah, I think we'll have to see how this bounce goes though. Also, uh, Tesla was continuing here. This is another one I was considering potentially shorting if we failed that 172.40 area, especially with that where we had that doji, but Tesla continuing to, to curl to the upside. I think if we have this continued bounce off 172.40, I might get involved, but honestly, Tesla, I found it really difficult to play. I had the long and I wasn't scalpy enough with it, except for part of this position. Then I got into the back into the long and I just ended up getting out too early. So I think my timing with Tesla has not been right. And you know, as Neil says, you do not want to get married to these stocks and married to these movements. So I'm going to have to not um, do this. Yeah. Sam saying to Adara, that is not the main reason DJT is dropping. It's normal for new companies to lose money in the first few years. It's simply just overvalued at six plus billion. And that, that's a fair point too, right? And I mean, I think that's that's kind of what we were saying a little bit as well, especially with um, OB looking at Reddit dropping as well. Some of these new IPOs and new mergers. But yeah, I really appreciate you saying that there, Sam. Um, Sam M, I don't want to don't want to butcher your last name there, but yeah, I think much much appreciated uh, with with that insight because I think part of it too is you do have that negative catalyst, but you also do have the fact that it is um, for sure a newer company and just had its it's it, got, it just had its de whack de spacking <laughs> last week, so so nice look there too. Um, yeah, some people some people talking about uh, about DJT in there, and it's certainly I think a riskier move, but there are I'm sure some opportunities to trade that one. And I will always remember that video that, that Sean was playing at one point of him trading that back in, I think, like 2021 with, with D-Walk and how that, that was a massive winner. So that one certainly does have a little bit of bamboozlement by nature going back to its D-Walk days. Well, so I'm looking at Microsoft again. This is a name I was playing earlier. It turns out I was initially thinking I got out of this too early, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with where I ended up getting out of this year because we didn't really get much lower than that 423.80. And this is a five minute chart. We are taking our sweet time with this level. We're just kind of chopping and churning and um, clip clopping along here. The last 25 minutes within about 10 pennies of that 423.75 area. So happy where I got out where I did. If we reject this again here at this 90 MA, I might get involved in the short again, but I really wanna see some, some real impetus for that. I do not want to get involved in a whim. Definitely missed my move up with AMD. We already popped 40 to 50 pennies on that, but that's okay. I still have the order set. I still like that level. If we get involved, we get involved. NVIDIA too, I'm going to take one last look at, of course, on my one minute. I usually will chart on, on the five minute, but for NVIDIA, as I said earlier, it is one of those names that I think the way that I trade, I will only really be looking at it off the one minute and then looking for, you know, confluence to see direction on the three or the five if I need. But I like this little baby range of that 900, 899, 50 area up to the 901. You can get about a dollar on that. So not not a huge amount of movement, but NVIDIA, I don't mind taking something like that in NVIDIA because it's not really a name you want to be NVIDIA, NVIDIA for too long anyway. So I, I'd be cool getting in and out this name, 900 to 901, something I'm going to keep an eye on. Right now though, just, just waiting to see what happens with AMD. How goes Google? Yeah, it's uh, again just uh, just it's it's kind of chopping in its range there, so I'm keeping an eye on it there. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's interesting. I I could never do like a one minute on uh, on Nvidia. That's uh, the way that ticker moves. It's just way too way too choppy for me. I like for me, I like a little bit more. Uh, 
I guess, more information. I like to let those candles kind of come in. I like the two minute, the three minute, and maybe the five minute, as I mentioned before as well. But uh, yeah, no, I think I think for scalping, one minute's uh, one minute's definitely great there. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm I've never really tried the one minute on Nvidia, but just based off of the way it moves. But th maybe that's something I should uh, I should consider, kind of uh, looking at Nvidia on uh, on the one minute, just for those quick uh, quick little scalps, though. Um, but uh, I think something a little bit uh, less volatile and uh, it gives you the same kind of opportunities is that uh, NV, NVDL. And uh, for me, I like, I like that a little bit better. It's a less, uh, less choppy, less, uh, less kind of wiki there. And uh, you have to be, I guess uh, you can be less precise as whereas uh, Nvidia, if you do have a tight risk, um, you do want to be a little bit uh, or as precise as possible there. Um, so uh, just watching this, watching this Google go sideways, DJT still on watch. Let's see if we can start printing some green 15s here. We've only been red to the downside uh, pretty much since, uh, since the open. So yeah, DWAC getting a little whacked there on the day off of that, off of that uh, catalyst. And then something about revenue you were saying that uh, they, they lost a bunch of money um, uh, over the last year or so. So uh, yeah, that, 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 would potentially, that would potentially do it there. Um, let me just fix this uh, wick real quick. Let me just get that out of the way. These, uh, these charts, man. Okay, so um, yeah, Google just got a little sideways there on the Google L. Uh, waiting for that DJT to show show me anything uh, show me anything interesting. Mu uh, top VOIP saying Mu short time. I was I was looking at Mu as well, kind of uh, holding holding quite uh, quite strong there. And you can see that it, it does look distinctly different. Oops, it does look distinctly different than uh, than uh, the other chip names here as well. So um, it is holding holding some of its strength, looking sim a, little, a lot more similar to Google. But uh, yeah, Micron looks nothing like Nvidia or AMD right now. Nvidia, look at that, very uh, gets crushed off of that drive, printing below that opening price as well on Nvidia. AMD kind of similar, uh, uh, distinctly different kind of pops, drops, doesn't really break its opening price, but holds this 182. Now we're pushing back in, but a little bit of a diddle. In the middle, Intel has still got it up here. Intel kind of coming comes right back on, bounces off of its open, uh, and then uh, proceeds to just go sideways here. So maybe Micron is uh, is the one kind of lagging behind there as uh, if, if some of these, uh, these chips and the market off of uh, off this 18.5, we talk about how how interesting every 100 points roughly is. So we're just coasting and hovering uh, just below this 18.5 on the NQ. Maybe we uh, maybe we're poised for a little bit of a pullback off of that whole number there as well. I have no idea. I'm just uh, I'm just making guesses right now, um, but uh, just waiting for some some of that action to potentially come in. But I like that I like that short idea on Micron. But I would rather kind of be a little bit closer to some. Of these highs here, about a point away, as uh, this is kind of the middle of the range here. So I think um, that if I were to take uh, something here, I'd have to be pretty tight, and I think the probability of getting chopped up in that tightness is quite high. So that's a little off the board for me. Um, if we can kind of break and t come down into that 125, maybe I'll take a quick look there. Uh, as uh, bidders have been holding VWAP and that 125 quite aggressively since the open, uh, with that relative strength we've been seeing on Micron. So uh, let me let me know other names uh, that you guys uh, are looking at here. Uh, top uh, top mentioning. Have a have, have a look at uh, Reddit. Let's take a quick look at Reddit. Uh, RDDT here. So yeah, Reddit. We talked about it being uh, being a little bit heavy as well. Making uh, uh, making a test at that day low, 45.15. So only about uh, uh, only about 10 10 to 13 pennies away from uh, from that low as of right now. Um, uh, Testing the testing those lows. Sorry, so testing testing those lows. VWAP is heavy. So Reddit. Let's see what Reddit does in and around some of these levels. We talk about that 47 being that IPO price, and we're holding below that right now. So does that IPO price turn into resistance, or uh, is that going to be any interesting? Let's see if day lows at 45s come uh, come into play at all. Let's see if uh, some of these tickers take a nice little pullback if the market. 
uh, decides to kind of have a little bit of a breather off this 18 half. As of right now, printing this 15 minute candle here is turning red. How much time is left on the 15 minute candle, you may ask. I have here about 11 minutes. So we just freshly started printing this candle right now. So still a little too early to tell. There goes some waves of red below the bid. You can see here on, uh, I guess that's Google Tape and Softy Book. Let me just, uh, I don't know why this book doesn't update right away with, uh, with the tape. So. Too. Some of them, um, they don't update. Some of them, yeah, they don't update together, but I think my, my main ones uh, off screen here do update. That's kind of what I'm uh, really focused on, and I'll, I'll put these up for you guys to see alongside as well, uh, the book and the book and the tape uh, alongside. So Google is what we're looking at here. We just saw a, a waves of red come in. Below the bid is what I have as, as a dark red. And then above the ask I have as a light green. So you can kind of, or it helps me gauge a little bit of short-term sentiment. Are people pushing, right? There's the red, there's the dark red. So are there orders pushing into the bid? Are there pu orders pushing into the ask? Is price kind of, uh, is price transacting in the middle? That Those are yellows, those are the midpoints. And then on the bid or on the ask, Ask is with the reds and the greens respectively as well. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a color gradient, a little bit of a, uh, read the rainbow, taste the rainbow happening here on uh, on the tape. So uh, I do like uh, I'm, I'm a very visual person. I like I like to kind of view it view it as such. And uh, people always ask me like, oh, are you looking at numbers? Are you looking at size on the tape? Yeah, a little bit of everything, but uh, more more uh, more of a little bit uh, tasting the rainbow, if you want to call it. Um, on, uh, on how that uh, price might be flowing in and around some of these prices here, how participants are interacting with some of these prices. Um, let's see what you guys got on watch. Uh, Ponzi Fonzi saying, welcome to my house. Chips need to dip and M uh, MU is overdue saying Vo uh, top VoIP. Yes, I, uh, maybe, let's see. I mean, I, li I like the short, like that's enticing if I look at this for a potential short, but like if we're holding up like this, I know I'm short on Google on a very similar kind of, uh, kind of pattern as well, but um, uh, I guess I like, uh, I like the Google short a little bit more than, uh, than the Micron, but uh, it, with the chips kind of uh, maybe catching a little bit of a base here, look at NVIDIA, uh, kind of the chip leader. Um, let's take a look, quick look at SMH as well. So kind of a, kind of a bit of a bounce here, 227 on uh, SMH, and uh, what, what was that low on NVIDIA? Uh, 892. So did we even get to 891s? No, not really. So we didn't get to previous week's lows. We're bouncing just slightly above that. So we're holding previous week's low as of right now on that initial test this week. So uh, going forward this week, I'm curious to know what we do with this price here at that uh, 891. Are we going to break it? Are we going to hold it? As of right now, we're holding and reclaiming that 900. What was the opening price on NVIDIA? Let's take a quick uh, look at that. That first first uh, candle right there, opening price, 902.97. So uh, just, a, just a few, uh, just a couple points away from that right now, uh, opening price on NVIDIA. Let's see what we do in and around there. I'm sh I am still short on the Google, but Google kind of just a chop and churn 154 halves, 150 halves as of right now, just uh, kind of uh, compressing almost as well. So is it gonna pick a direction? Who knows, I have no idea, but I'm, uh, I'm positioned, I got my risk on, I've accepted the risk, let's see if this comes into fruition uh, or not. But when it comes to reversion, some of these other tickers definitely were much, much nicer vehicles off of, uh, off of the open there. So uh, uh, Fauzia asking uh, why NVIDIA short? Um, yeah, I don't know. NVIDIA short was, uh, was looking good off of, uh, off of this morning session here. This nice little uh, pop and then drops, comes right back through VWAP and then uh, back through some of these uh, previous days levels as well, pre-market levels as well. Again, I don't really have anything on it, but I was watching it for that, uh, for that uh, push back down. Um, had the Intel, Intel short alongside with it, kind of uh, riding that chip, chips with the dip momentum to the downside there as well. But as you can see, good reason to get out, kind of timed out, shot clocked out on the Intel short. I'm like, all right, well, if this is not gonna continue in the next X amount of time, I do wanna piece off of the full position and, uh, and kind of uh, uh, let, it, let it do its thing. Maybe uh, some other places could be potentially better for that uh, that sympathy move um, 
on the chips, right? We were talking about how some takers may be better vehicles when it comes to liquidity and uh, price action and even just range or magnitude as well. But uh, relative to, relative to um, Intel, some of the other names that did move around quite aggressively, again, NVIDIA being one of them, AMD, of course, and then SMH, SMH as well. I guess the Micron did did do the the drive off the open, right? It did kind of uh, have that sympathy drive off the open, but it held. So 119 to 127. So um, definitely a lot to watch as we begin this uh, begin this week coming off of a long weekend here. So let us know what you guys are trading in the chat. We'll take a quick look at them. I don't have too many plans. Trying to start off the week nice and steady, nice and slow. Had a couple ideas there. Some come to fruition, some don't. I missed some right off the bat. Some, uh, some I did catch. But uh, again, it's a work in progress. I do got to get better at capturing some of these opportunities and really honing in on what's, what's, uh, what's working well for me. So I um, wasn't quite able to uh, really do that on Intel. Sure, we had a piece of the move, but, that, but when it does come back in, I do have to be much more aggressive, maybe even back through this view up on the, re, on the pop through that uh, 45, fails to follow through 45. Maybe I can definitely be getting some more there for that flush back to the downside here on Intel. But I don't have too much else on the, uh, on the board here for me. Um, let me know what you guys are watching uh, in the chat. So just the chips, chips with the dip for me. Yeah, chips with the dip. I think, yeah, I think also earlier that person asking why NVIDIA short might have been directed at me. I was trying to scalp that short, but honestly, like I said, just trying to, to minimize my risk by taking very, very small positions. And honestly, I have to say, you always have to look for things that you learn from each trade. And I think with these case, I, I'm really proud of my risk management on both of these. I was able to, to mitigate my losses by just the second we kind of get, give yourself about a dollar because NVIDIA, you kind of have to. Both of these, I was able to extricate myself pretty cleanly. So... So no complaints here. We did lose on the trades, but there's always uh, some more opportunities. Um, and yeah, what happened here is I was trying to short this because we would, did reject that 900 pretty well. I liked it. Then I get involved and it kind of goes up to 901, so I got out. There we go. Tried to go long earlier as well, and it was actually holding up decently, but we couldn't. I was going to give it to like 90, I think like just shy of 901, but we weren't able to really get that opportunity, unfortunately. So it's okay. Uh, keep going. I think there is something here in this range of 900 to 901, but it's one that I need to be watching the book a lot more for before I get involved. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you look at this here, like this 900 area to 901, 90150 has been giving you some opportunities. You have to be patient, which is just not really something I do very well, unfortunately. And I also think the other aspect of this is is being aware of. You know, sometimes you have to leave the trade, even though there are still some opportunities. Nvidia can't be bamboozling, as Obi was just saying there too. And maybe I need to switch over to my NVDL. That might be the solution. So, there we go to NVDA. Also, though, I think it was uh, Hope and Victory earlier asking about CCJ. So let's look at Cameco. Um, this is this is a uranium name. I want to say. Let me look and see what Cameco does. Um, so yeah, uranium. They are uranium. They're based in Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, um, Canada. So nice. in the prairies. Have you ever been to Saskatchewan? Um, I don't. I don't think I've been to Saskatchewan. I forget where where it was uh, that I did go. Um, I'll remember. I forget. It was. It was there was some. Uh, there was a place uh, in in north uh, northeast, northwestern Canada, that I might have uh, that I might have gone to. I'm trying. I'll try to remember the place, but I think it might have been somewhere around uh, Saskatchewan. But uh, I will get back to you on, on that one. I'll take a look. Yeah. But uh, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing on my watch here. I see that people still talking about CXAI. Uh, Louis, uh, Louis Tortu, uh, Tortora? Louis Tortora, Google short I'm in. All right, well, I've been in the short for, for, for a little bit here. It's still kind of sideways, not really doing too much here as of right now. So I'll stay a little bit more patient there. But uh, yeah, good luck, uh, good luck with that one. Um, Mr. Long Shorts uh, talking about Sask Saskatchewan. <laughs> nice, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll try to remember what that what that place was. I remember going there for uh, for uh, a little bit of uh, of, of a work trip um, back in the day. Uh, I think it might have been. It's one of the it's one of the territories. I'll, I'll get I'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah. I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I pulled, I pulled up this CCJ, I think, for Hope and Victory there, which is a company based in Saskatoon, which is how we hopped down that particular rabbit hole there. Um, but, yeah, no, I was curious. I've been, like, once to, to Saskatoon um, or to, you know, to, to Calgary 
in general there. But yeah, this is, um, no, sorry, Saskatchewan, not even, well, I'm, I'm thinking two different provinces. You can tell it's a Monday. But yeah, so yeah, Saskatchewan, um, nice, and certainly also the home of CCJ here. CCJ, we actually did have a catalyst for as well. Uh, Goldman Sachs initiating coverage with a buy rating and a $55 price target. So given we're currently trading around 46, that is some nice upside there for CCJ with that price target from Goldman Sachs. Yeah, I mean, for this one right now, we're certainly seeing what we've seen with a lot of these names. Big move up off the open and then just kind of chopping and churning. So right now, slightly higher lows uh, and higher highs. But we haven't uh, eclipsed this earlier high with this topping tail candle that we had at... 10, eight, no, where was this? 9.55, so this is on the five minutes. So we had this uh, wick up into highs of day, which are which were 46.83. Then we kind of sold off a little bit, uh, ending up at this 46.30 to close the candle. We've not seen that height since. Right now, though, we're kind of approaching this 46.30. I think it'll be interesting to see what we do here. Right now at 46.23, so I'm going to raise these lines and look at the daily chart here. 4C to the C to the J for Hope and Victory, which is a, a very great name and certainly one that gives a lot of good vibes heading into this week. Whew. Yeah, CCJ yeah. is a, a nice look. This is its third, fourth straight candle to the upside, actually. Uh, let's zoom out. As Neil says, when in doubt, zoom out. Yeah, I think, I think it does look like we're kind of in a nice little uptrend for this name, and we have been for actually for quite some time as I pull back on this chart. Holy, holy cow. Uh, this time last year, we were trading at 23, so now we're at 46, so basically doubling where we were trading la this time last year, so nice look here. We are, I, I think it'd be interesting to kind of see what we do here, breaking above this 47, 48 area that we had some peaks into earlier. Then, of course, the pseudo, pseudo double top at 51, I think would be a really nice area to eclipse, just continuing to make these higher highs. We did make a couple slightly lower lows from where we were trading January 5th, but I think the uptrend is generally still present. We do still seem to have some upward momentum, but I think continuing to make these higher highs uh, would be a nice look. Eddie R. saying, Sharif wanted to see the Lions already. What international travel travels would you like to do in the future, which you've already been to? I haven't traveled much. I'm honestly not much of a traveler. I have really bad jet lag, so then I just get, uh, I want to sleep a lot. Uh, which is kind of the theme of my life, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, so I, I can't I can't really travel much. I went to Italy once. That was cool. Uh, but the sleep really got me. Have you traveled much internationally? Uh, yeah, I've I've traveled uh, quite a bit um, in the past. I went to uh, school in the in the Caribbean for a little bit. Oh, nice. So uh, I was traveling at least uh, three to four times a year, just back and forth. Maybe stopping at different islands on the way. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I like I like traveling. It's it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, that 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 jet lag, uh, the first first couple of days. If there's a stark difference, right? If there's a stark difference in the time time zone. But I like to sleep on the plane. Yeah, that's um, true. So uh, yeah, uh, go um, fly on to Vancouver this this weekend. So that's what I'm basically going to be doing. I'm going to be sleeping on the plane. It's a four and a half hour uh, uh, flight. So uh, more than likely, I'm just going to be uh, sleeping on the plane. And they have a shift in, uh, in the time zone as well. We were just talking about the, the west side, kind of where, that, where the market opens at 6.30, close at 1. So that will be interesting to kind of, uh, to kind of experience that, that bit of a schedule there as well. But, uh, you know, I, I, like, I like to travel. Um, haven't really gone uh, on vacation uh, for, for, I guess, a few years now. Um, but uh, no, I, I do have a, a bachelor party coming up this uh, this month, I think. Yeah, at the end of, at the end of this month, one of my best friends he's getting uh, he's getting married later on this year, so uh, we're going to Cuba for for a little bit of a bachelor party for like a few days. Have I've never been um, to uh, to both either. I think this would be my first bachelor party and uh, uh, first time to Cuba as well. So it'll, it should be it should be interesting. Um, but yeah, haven't traveled in a bit, but this, uh, this month, this month, this past couple of months, been traveling a little bit more. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you just went to New York, too. I yeah, said yeah, that. I went like, to New York last you week, just yeah. in New York. And that you stayed fun. in Jersey, too, right? Yeah, so I stayed in Jersey with like a friend. Really yeah. Switching it up. Nice, yeah, that's I mean, good. also, it's, it's 102, so we will do the lesson soon, but yeah, quickly, too, as well, I want to address, I want to look back at NVIDIA, because I've been staring at this one all day, and also, I did have, I believe, Boring Man saying that I'm just... 
taking this one long after, uh, off some of these previous levels was a good trade all day. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I believe that's what it said earlier. I'm just trying to, trying to remember this. Here we go. NVIDIA long should have been the trade with stops low last week's low. Worked like a deep dream trade. Yeah, congrats to you. That's what I should have been doing because we, we are a little bit down on this name. But honestly, you know, I, I, I think sometimes you have to try different things and kind of uh, figure out what you want to do, right? So for me, I think fine with NVIDIA. The longer I stay in NVIDIA, the more antsy I get. So the more that I've been trying to do these scallops off the one minute, the better that's been for me today. Today, it's not been the trade, but I mean, congrats to you, the boring man. And that's something I should really uh, be looking into as well. So I'm going to take a take a look at this. I think in general, like incorporating previous levels into trading is something I want to look at more. I know, you know, Sharif talks about the pivots, which are really based on, on previous days levels. Kyle Burdett as well in the chat. Shout out to big Kyle. Also, we'll mention uh, previous levels too. So I think, yeah, these are really important uh, levels to keep an eye on. Also, before we go to the lesson, there is a question here from Hansi Fonzi. Obi, what's the 1999 Corolla primer back corner panel ball back tire screen? <laughs> Thank you for your hands emoji. I know what none of that means. Yeah, well, I mean, neither do I. But I think I think what you're talking about is uh, what's that? What's that kind of uh, everyday layup? Kind of like a like a you know like a B or like a tier tier three or however you want to tier your trades uh, kind of trade, something that might show up uh, every day. You know, you see it, you see it rolling down the street uh, more often than not. Sure, maybe you don't get that Lambo coming in on the street every day and I don't see any, uh, any, anything like that right now. Maybe some of those reversions off of, uh, off of the open uh, might have been, been it, but uh, I think, uh, who, who was that? That was Ponzi Fonzi? Yeah, I, of, course it's, of course it's Ponzi that asked that question. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm, still, I'm still looking at it. Let me know if you, if you, can, find, uh, if you can find that, uh, that trade uh, as well. I'm in, uh, I'm in the short that I do want to be in, but uh, again, it's a little sideways, pretty much printing, printing uh, uh, flat here as of right now. Um, so I don't have too much else on watch. I did have a couple of other names um, as like earnings, earnings day twos. Uh, we, we talk about uh, Walgreens. Walgreens, I did trade that last week. Uh, WBA, let's see what WBA has on watch. Uh, Kyle Bernadette with the, uh, with the super chat. Um, all right, okay, I guess uh, I'll be there on that bachelor party. Remember to love the roundy bottoms and smack the, the asks? Yes, definitely. I'm always going to be, uh, if, I like the, if I like the bid, if I like the ask, I'm going to remove the liquidity, that's for sure, um, and uh, not really post. That's what I'm learning, right? If you post, you might not get it. You know, you're just sitting there, you're like, maybe, maybe it'll hit me, maybe it'll not, I'm just posted. But if you want it, you just got to remove the liquidity, go for it. And uh, yeah, that's definitely, definitely uh, some good, good advice there, uh, Kyle. Um, WBA, all right, back to, back to WBA um, here. But WBA straight selling to the downside, oh boy. So uh, I was like, okay, well yesterday, or the, the last trading day, we had some strength, we reclaimed VWAP, we pretty much closed near the high of day there on, uh, on Walgreens, but coming in today, quite the opposite, exactly the opposite. Um, um, to say, as we've only been selling off quite aggressively, maybe not as aggressively, but a slow methodical grind, but it is pretty aggressive if you go to a higher time frame there, straight to the downside, no real relief. You have one test of this 21 area. Uh, was that a level the day before? Maybe a little bit of a level, uh, but nothing too crazy. Happens to be VWAP today, and we've just been selling off since then. Now testing in and around some of those lows, right? Uh, earnings reaction low was that 20 level. We're just at that 20 right now. So 2021 is that uh, is that low, uh, low specifically 2020, and then uh, 2016 is what we're trading at right now on Walgreens Boot Alliance. Boots Alliance, uh, but uh, yeah, I did kind of have that on watch as a con as a potential continuation play, but. Did that continue? Absolutely not. It, it kind of quadrupled to the downside. So uh, let's let's uh, let's just stay a little uh, away from that one. Sure, the short was quite nice if I had that perspective going off into the open, but I had only planned for that continuation because I was like, okay, well, interesting that this is closing near high a day. Let's see if that if we can find the bit if the bidders are real. Are we going to find them at VWAP on a little bit of a pullback, which we didn't, um, uh, or are we going to continue? 
continue back through some of those highs, and those highs were 22s, right? 22 is a day high from fr uh, from Thursday, and we never could even get get a little uh, get close to that. We just uh, fail that closing price and then flush back to the downside on Walgreens Boot Alliance. Boots Alliance there. So not really what I was looking for. So not really something I really dabbled in. Um, so what is the next trade? I'm, I'm kind of just watching this, uh, this Google. Where can I get more of this Google? If this Google kind of falls on its face here, it, I think it could be really interesting. Um, very, very strong, right? Uh, just almost, almost. Uh, I don't want to say unusual, but it is holding in uh, in the upper fifth of this strong drive that we had. So it is relatively strong there. Um, if it goes one way or another, I think it could be definitely interesting there. But yeah, take a look. Distinctly different. Um, we've done this a couple uh, for a couple of times, I guess. Just uh, here, you can have, you have that strength. It starts in the pre market. You just coast sideways, pretty much into the close uh, there. Um, not really seeing that kind of behavior that often. Okay, maybe some here. Um, this one actually t does a bit of a pullback. This one's quite, quite the opposite. You flush and then you just coast sideways near the lows for pretty much the whole day. So today, are we gonna get more of the same? Are we just gonna coast sideways into the close? If that's the case, then um, I'll pretty much stay flat or be flat on this trade, or we kind of come in and maybe we, we break one of these ends of the range and uh, uh, a potential chance to either size more or flip and get uh, get some get just as much or even more to the upside here on the Google as uh, uh, as the market kind of comes back down. 18.5 couldn't really get there, having a little bit of a pullback. Seems like Intel coming down as well, make, maybe looking for those fresh lows. So let's see what AMD is up to. AMD did make a lower high underneath this. What is this? 84 halves as well. So uh, pretty much sideways there on AMD, so nothing too crazy. What are you guys trading? Are you guys actively in something right now? What's moving around? My eyes are very limited right now, so if you guys can kind of point me in the right direction, I, I'll, be, I'll be more than willing to take a look at some of those tickers to see if there's any opportunity that kind of matches uh, my style or my playbook uh, on, the, on the day today. But uh, market's a little bit sideways off of that uh, strong flush in the opening session right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, see, it's a, it's a nice, um, it, I think there's a lot of opportunities in the market, but I'm the same way where I'm trying to struggle to find them. So shout out to Kyle Burdett, apparently going away for the rest of the week, so you're not going to be in the chat much. Enjoy your trip. Um, much appreciated, and thank you again for your super chat, which I think amused us all to um, to have right up others. That was pretty funny. As Bears vs. Bulls said there, the enunciation was very on point <laughs> for that one. But yeah, Starbucks, um, Kyle Burdett pointing this one out to me. Starbucks, yeah, this interesting little range here. We have this pseudo double bottom at 91, right? Then we come back up into this 94 area, and look at that kind of just disappeared. We did have this kind of failed uh, wick here into that 9140 here that we kind of eventually did get get sold out there. So VWAP really struggling with, I do think there is something like a 40 penny range. So we're gonna have to see if this continues or if we bounce off this 90 MA, but I do think there are some opportunities in Starbucks. I'm gonna get to the lesson, but IK asking you about Lily a couple times here. So let's look at my old pal, Eli Lily. And you know, as Neil spoke about getting divorced from stocks, this was a very hard one for me to divorce. I weirdly uh, fell really into trading this name because I think the thing with Lily is when it works out well, you can do really well with it. When it doesn't though, you can get smacked in the face. I think that was my issue, was I just had to kind of step aside. And I don't know if we amicably divorced like Obi and Amazon. I think with Lily, it was a bit more of a, you know, a bit of a contemptuous, um, contemptuous situation where I just, you know, had to say goodbye to, to, to Miss Lily. But yeah, I mean, right now, about a, a, about a 28 penny spread, which for Lily is, is not horrifying. Sorry, I guess like 22 pennies. Not, not a bad look, though, for Lily. I mean, I think right now, IK, we're certainly curling up. I think you mentioned earlier you're in a long, so congrats to you. We had this nice recovery here off that 7450 area. And I mean, this is a nice look, actually, for uh, volume as well. Lily, one and a half million shares of volume is not too shabby at all. Like I said, I like Lily when she's above a milli. I shout it to Lil Wayne with a milli. But yeah, I mean, we're above a milli on Lily, so I think nice look. I would like to see, though, what we do here at one, at 764. That was an earlier area we popped into and then rejected. So I want to see us take 764 with the viciousness. We're about a couple dollars away from that. But nice look on Lily. This nice five minute green candle there is beautiful. Congrats to you. Um, uh, congrats to you, IK, 
for this long on Lily. Also, yeah, right, one more too before we get to this lesson. AMD, uh, basically, I where I ended up getting stopped out was ironically where the long actually looks like it's picking up. But if we continue to reject that 130, 83.50 area, I might go short here. Basically, the, the whole concept with this was this was an earlier area that we saw some support. Uh, we were initially holding up here decently, and then we kind of fell, so I got out. As Neil said once, you know, you're losing trades should be boring. This one was pretty boring, so pretty happy with that. But also happy to get to our last run-through of the lesson of the day. It looks like I closed my PowerPoint, so that's all cool. We'll pull that back up. And we'll be talking today about different times of, of day for trading this whole week. And today is talking about what it's like trading on the open. If anyone has any insight as well or any strategies they like to trade off the open, let us know in the chat. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll chime in, give some, some color here to the lesson as well. And so uh, basically introduction here is morning trading or trading the open is basically going to refer to trading that occurs within the first hour of the trading day. So about 9.30 to 10.30 a.m., one of the benefits of the strategies that allow us traders to capitalize on the volatility present during that time of day, especially ahead of the slower action that is often found during the midday. So um, oh, there, I'm, there we go. Uh, why the morning matters. Uh, volume is usually going to be a little bit stronger at the open, which can give traders lots of opportunities to get involved in more liquid stocks. If an asset or index has lower volume off the open, it can suggest a lack of interest in the asset or market that day. So some of these days you can really tell off the open if it's like a holiday shortened week. So last week there was a little bit less volume, a little bit more flat. You can get a sense of that based on what happens off the open. Direction here. Also worth noting because the direction that the stock moves immediately off the open can give market participants a sense of whether investors or traders are feeling bullish or bearish heading into the session. So one example was that massive pop-up on Google, although, of course, as, as Obi was telling us through his short, you can play that different ways, right? But I think it does give you kind of a sense in, in general of how the market is feeling beyond what we got in the pre. Levels, also worth noting here as well. Action off the open can give uh, traders a sense of levels that can be important for the asset during the session. So potentially early levels of support and resistance. And also the opening price of an asset is used for indicators like pivots. Shout out to Sharif um, on his safari. But there are some other factors to consider as well. There is a lot of volatility in these early trading, which can give a greater excitement and opportunities for profit, but it can also make things a little bit riskier because trends and directions can be susceptible to change. So make sure that you're prepared for leaving the trade quickly, whether it be through taking profit or exiting with a loss, figure out and set up your profit taking and stop loss levels right when you enter the trade so that you can take advantage of and fail to be swept up in uh, some of those sudden price movements that can are common in morning trading. Uh, be aware of any economic releases, Fed speaker earnings calls, if applicable, uh, that are scheduled during the first half hour or hour of the trading day because, you know, we had this today as well. Some economic data is actually released in the morning. When you first started trading, did you find like you had a, a particular preferred time of day to trade in or anything like that or, or times of day that you still kind of will prefer a little bit more? Yeah, uh, I think uh, just, um, I guess... Off of uh, off of stats is just like uh, when, I, when I take my stats for throughout the day, uh, it seems like there's certain certain uh, certain strategies that work uh, much better in the morning session. Certain strategies work better during the midday, and then uh, certain strategies going into the close as well. So it's like really uh, really honing into like what works when and what part of the playbook is uh, is um, I guess uh, deployable at what time. Definitely uh, is something that I'm working on, uh, something I'm, I'm trying to get better at as well. Micron breaking through that 125. We, we talk about that VWAP hold as of right now. So, uh, uh, or a little earlier, we talked about how it was holding up. And uh, now a little bit uh, change in behavior as VWAP is uh, broken along with that 125, a little bit of a psychological level, as well as an intraday level as well. So a little bit of confluence happening at that 125. But yeah, no, uh, depending on the time of day, I do kind of like to trade a little differently. Like you mentioned, um, off the open, uh, very volatile kind of price action, and that's what I like for the, for those quick kind of like scalps. I might not be in there for, for very long, maybe a couple of minutes. Maybe it's just a tape scalp. As soon as I see something on the tape, I, I'll be gone. Uh, from that trade, sometimes that lasts a couple of minutes, sometimes even a few seconds there. But uh, 
uh, if it's like a midday midday to like later on, maybe something a little bit more uh, more calm, right? It, it, maybe a level to level, maybe something's consolidating, the volume and aggression isn't as uh, as uh, as pronounced during the mid middle of the day. So uh, I think different uh, strategies or different kind of an approach is uh, be has been better for me on uh, depending on the time there. But I think I think something you pointed out that that is quite important and I've been kind of uh, caught off guard by it a few times uh, is, uh, is uh, um, the economic number. So you have a market catalyst, something that will move the markets and we've seen it time and time again, whether that's Chicago PMI, whether that's CPI a couple of years ago, um, FOMC, right? There, there are certain market, uh, market catalysts and market events that do move tickers around. So based off of that, I think it's always, always, uh, um, important to stay uh, stay aware of those things. So every morning now, part of as part of my process, I look at like the economic calendar. I look at whether or not is there going to be some action or something moving around 9.45 or 10 a.m. That's usually uh, around the time when those number, numbers come out, 8.30 as well. Um, but uh, yeah, are, is there any economic number coming, coming out? I don't want to be, well, I was that guy and I don't want to be that guy who is, or, or girl, who's just like, you know, um, oh, I'm in a position, I'm in a trade, and all of a sudden, like, an economic number or some news uh, comes out, news that that we knew that was going to happen, right? It, like, it was there. The date and time was already set out, and uh, you knew that the, based off of historical price action, uh, the markets can potentially move aggressively off of an economic number. It's a market catalyst. You have to be uh, wary of that, either just have the stop in or just not be in position, right? So uh, there's been times in the past where I've been in position, and I either get stopped out, or maybe I don't have a stop in, and it goes crazy, and I'm just like, oh, what the hell just happened? Um, I, I I have no idea, things are going crazy, punch out, kind of panic, and you don't want to be in that position. You don't, you don't want to be that kind of uh, trader. And again, I live and you learn. I kind of went through that a couple of times before I was like, well, I never want that to happen to me ever again. So what do I do to get a little bit better? Uh, Every day part, part of the morning process is looking at that, giving a quick look at that economic calendar. Like, is there going to be something at 9.45 or 10 a.m.? Is there, uh, or do we have any Fed speakers kind of coming out? Um, is anyone important speaking? Is the reversion man speaking? Shout out to Powell. Um, but yeah, no, we talk about uh, getting married to the stock, uh, and if things are going to move around, Powell is that guy she, the ticker tells you not to worry about, right? So uh, <laughs> you don't want to get you don't want to get too married to 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 a ticker that moves around when Powell Powell talks there. So <laughs> I really like that analogy. <laughs> so that's that's something to consider for sure, Darren. <laughs> the guy the ticker tells. <laughs> Yeah, I was. That was a good one. I, I got knocked out by that. Obi's kill it. I mean, thank you again for Obi for coming on uh, this whole week and uh, killing it with um, some nice of these, these jokes and references today. This is, I, I yeah, I, as you could tell, I'm, I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> also, Eddie, our adults are at 10 a.m. That is correct. But yeah, I mean, in all seriousness, I totally, I totally see what you mean, right? Because it's like if you can be aware of an event. Why not, you know, apprise yourself of that information? Because there are obviously events or, or news, for example, Apple, when we found out about Apple and Darwin AI, that was something that no one was really prepared for that report to come out, right? So if you were in that, that trade and you did get caught unawares, it makes sense that you would because we weren't really prepared for that. But if it's something like an economic event and all you have to do is look into it, right, it kind of... I guess you owe it to yourself to, to be aware of that type of thing. So I think, I think that's a really interesting point, and I, I appreciate you bringing it up. Also, Eddie R. saying, uh, I guess when I was talking about events to be aware of, meta events to be aware. Pretty sure that's a reference to me um, having the Meta Connect debacle uh, where Meta sold off aggressively, about $3. But actually, let's look at Meta because Meta has been kind of a little sleepy today. Although not when, when Sean took the short. Shout out to Sean's massive short here on this name earlier today because wow, this one had a massive move to the downside. Then we recovered a little bit here, 488 around those previous pre-market areas. This is on the five minute here too, just for, for some context. Then we come back up, bounce off the 90 MA a little bit, hold it really well, and then dip below. The spread on this isn't actually that bad right now. It's about uh, nine pennies, which for meta is, is actually great. But, you know, Sean was saying earlier this one was a larger spread. I think Meta, like NVIDIA, the more action it gets, the more interesting it gets, the spreadier it gets, which is something I would definitely be aware of. And that's why I had to kind of step aside from trading Meta. I will only trade Meta now if I'm, like, 
obsessed with the movement. In general, of course, you wanna make sure you have rules for entering stocks, but for Meta, it's not even like, oh, I really like it. I have to be obsessed and I have to be in love and it has to be a range trade for me to get involved in this name because the spread is a little, just a little bit too much for me if I'm being really honest, unless I'm like absolutely ready to, to commit to whatever's happening here. But yeah, right now, I mean, Meta, Meta actually, with this spread not being that bad, this actually could be a decent range here, 490 to 491. I want to stare at the book a little bit longer before I, I step in here. Let's see if we, you know, we can taste the rainbow looking at the, the book and the tape. I really, I really liked that, that analogy, so I'm going to have to see here. But I think there is some kind of opportunity here in Meta. Also, not getting two AM destroyed in AMD right now. As I did mention, we did get chopped up in this name earlier, but I did like too that we were kind of, look at this massive topping tail candle here. We tried to reclaim that area. AMD was like, nah, 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 and we continue to sell off. We're basically flat on this. My, my point of entry is not great. That is one thing I'm working on. I should have added at that 183 fit. 183.40 when we, when we weren't able to hold that, but I didn't, so I cannot dwell on that. I do have a beak water set here to get out the whole position around 182.60s. So coming into that earlier area, we saw that chop and churn, as I mentioned earlier, I do like that 182.50 area, but I will never let stocks run until the exact area I like them just because I don't really trust the stocks that much. I don't really trust myself that much. So I like to give myself about, you know, 10 pennies of room. So if we can get to 182.60, I'd be pleased as punch. That's the area I'm looking at. I don't have much else on the horizon. I do have my beautiful little um, NVIDIA. Not that NVIDIA is beautiful, but I do have my little NVIDIA one minute on my side chart. A little bit of range, but not nothing that I'm um, super, super committing to here. It looks like we're doing the same kind of thing we did this time that I got swept up in. Where we do, and I mean, shout out to Frank Bosa for saying, don't, don't get, you know, um, stuck in, in, into buying or get swept up in buying these dips in NVIDIA. And I totally agree, agree because I think these dips in NVIDIA are short, so short lived. Like, I think right now we could be doing what we did a little bit here earlier, where we have these couple pops in where we look like we're developing a range. Then we kind of fall below the 90 MA and we sell off. That could be what's happening here. If we reject that 896, this actually could be, um, could be a short opportunity for me, but I really want to be patient with that. I'm shorting another chip name right now, so they would that you know that would be a nice um, set of chips with with I guess instead of the dip, it's the rip. I don't know if you're shorting them, but yeah, shout out to Ob with the, the chips and the dip there. So let's take a look at this one here too. Also, day trading Sing, I really appreciate this one. I know you like IWM and introduced it to me. I have found more success with SOXL with the same strategy. You may want to study it for yourself. So yeah, that's Ooh. that's the um. SOXL, let's look at this. Is this on the um, AM? Let's take a look here. This is semi, I know it's like a, a, um, a levered version of the semiconductor. Yeah, so it's three times bull shares for the semiconductors. Yeah, this is interesting. This is the one I wanna study a little bit more too because with these ETFs, like I said, I find that I have to you know, divorce my mind from the chart and look at it more as a book perspective uh, and from the book and using the chart more as levels. But I mean, on the day right now, intraday, I like what we're doing with this 4780. This is certainly an area of uh, support earlier, so we'll have to see if it flips to resistance. Also, was a bit interesting in the pre. So if I look at basically what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the book for interesting levels, or sorry, the chart for interesting levels. Then if we come to play in the book, I'll get involved. So thank you very much, Day Trading Sing, for bringing this one up. Right now, AMD just kind of chopping and turning. That's the only thing I'm in. Uh, how are you doing with Google? Uh, Google is just, like I said before, kind of just uh, sideways, not really doing anything too crazy there. Uh, market is pushing towards the downside, uh, maybe maybe pushing for those fresh lows there. But I'm watching Micron here. Uh, Micron, uh, aggressive to the downside. We kind of uh, mentioned it earlier. It was looking a little similar to uh, the Google L uh, in terms of how it, how it was setting up, but it's finally kind of cracking there. So let me just pull it up so you guys can see. Kind of looked at this. We were like, okay, well, it's respecting VWAP. Let's see if it kind of respects VWAP there. It doesn't really do it. 125 is broken right now. We, we, uh, we're trading below 125, 124.40s as of right now. So we're, we're printing below this shelf that we had, that we kind of made in the morning session. So look, taking a look at the three minute, you can see it a little bit clearer. That 125, a little bit of a wick uh, hold over and over again. That 125 pushes right back up towards high a day. Can't really make it. Distinct change in behavior. 
here where uh, you've not only broken trend, you've gone sideways for a while. So you, you get, you get uh, people kind of timing out of their trades either going either way. And then it, it's, it seems to have picked a direction uh, relative to that 125, the lower end of that range there on Micron. Let's see how far we kind of pull back here. So just looking, looking at the, the, the drive that we had, maybe we had a little bit of uh, consolidation here underneath that 123 and then some more in and around this 124 just underneath it. So we're coming right into that 124 as of right now. Let's see what Micron will have in store. Maybe a little bit of a bounce, maybe some reversion, but I have no idea. I'm patiently waiting to see if there's anything interesting on the tape. I did. I was looking uh, at this price here on, at that 125 for a potential bounce because I was like, all right, well, every time we've been here, uh, we kind of wick back through that 125 and hold that 125. And I was like, maybe more of the same to get involved uh, in and around here, but it doesn't do that. We do break that 125 and continue to the downside here. So I'll stay a little bit more patient just to see what that, uh, what that action might bring. But the market is kind of heavy to the downside. Maybe Nvidia is a good place to qu quickly take a look and see if it's also doing a bit of a bounce and maybe that will keep us, uh, keep us informed for a potential micron bounce as well. Uh, Nvidia just a little bit sideways underneath that 900. So we've been kind of doing this for, for a little bit. Let's take a look at the f uh, 15 minute. So yeah, so 315s into that nine and then a little bit of a pullback making a higher low as of right now. VWAPs at 907 on the 15 minute chart I, I have. So uh, let's see if Nvidia kind of bounces. If Nvidia bounces, let's see if Micron kind of follows in step if it can get back through that 125 and if VWAP holds, I think I might look at it for a potential long. But as of right now, we did break that shelf uh, as uh, Micron was holding a decent, uh, decent chunk of its action. So this morning action, we held uh, a decent chunk of it. And now we're trading back below. So do we take that 30% pullback? Do we take a 50% pullback? Or like we've seen on some of these other names, I know that somebody in the chat was saying, oh, Amazon short really working on, working out. Oh boy, is it that Amazon short quite nice if you had some of these prices from 183s in, in, in the morning session. So we talk about a reversion and oh boy, was this a reversion back down. So uh, we were making a little bit of a shelf here on top of this 180. We, we attempted to, to push through 180. You can see this a little bit of a, uh, maybe a head and shoulders, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, price holds this 180 and some change. You, you, you violate that price. You pop back in and you start to hold it again. So let's see whether or not this hold it has, it is of any significance. And let's see if we can kind of come back into that view up. But yes, shorts off of, uh, off of this morning kind of drive working very, very nice as it's about three points in the money here off of, uh, off of the highs uh, down into that 180 there on Amazon. So I'm just, I'm just gonna stay patient here. Uh, Google kind of a little bit of a curl, but uh, pretty much sideways there. You can see that it, we're well within this, uh, this opening, uh, not really opening range, but when we did slow down this range of consolidation that it's been doing in the upper fifth of its action there on the day on Google. Um, oh boy, AMD saying solo crystal. All right, let's take a quick look at AMD as well. AMD sideways, it would seem, uh, in and around VWAP. So that 180, I think that 183, 184 was interesting last week, right? Yeah, I think it might've been week high, if I do remember correctly. So yeah, right there. So you got uh, Monday, Tuesday. So yeah, week highs in and around that 83, 83 and some change um, on, uh, on AMD from the previous week coming in you we're pretty much orbiting that uh, those prices right now with uh, with a core being in and around that 84 83 halves on AMD. So decent look there. I don't really have anything on it right now. Uh, not really watching it too much for for too much of the moves, but chips definitely uh, on watch. AMD doing a little sideways, so maybe not the best for me. But uh, I was watching Intel and uh, NVIDIA off of the open. So uh, I don't know how many of you kind of traded that. Uh, MU gave it up on the five. Yeah, so MU um, kind of pulling back, right? It's, we're, hold, we're, holding it, we're holding up on the five. You mean on the five EMA or the five minute? 
uh, well, either or, I think both, uh, both are a little broken right now as uh, Micron looking like it's, uh, it's poised to test some fresh uh, lows, inter uh, in not, not lows on the day, but relative to this kind of consolidation, this chop that we've, we've been having over the past hour or so, uh, we are testing some fresh lows. So let's see if we can come back into some of those places where we saw consolidation on, uh, on the way up. Where might, where might that be, you asked? We kind of pointed out in and around that 124 and that 123, a little bit of a, of a chop there on the way up. So let's see whether or not we can kind of come back into some of those levels with Micron. Breaking trend, going sideways and pulling back for a little bit of relief after a really strong drive to the upside today. Yeah, no, I mean, and um, here Lucas Jackson clarifying um, the five minute chart. Yeah, but I mean, I think as you said too, it really was kind of On both, yeah. giving up both, which is, which is always interesting when there's kind of like accidental, you know, more implications there. I like this in video, this failure of on NVDA, it's the, the 899 area, but I don't know if I want to take this on NVDA. So I might take this NVDL. NVDL has, in my, uh, from what I've seen, the best volume of these NVIDIA derivatives. Uh, this one right now, about 9.2 billion. I know NVDX, sometimes I like those names that give you a little bit, you know, a little bit more movement just because I usually take smaller shares. So NVDL is, is not always going to give me enough because I do take smaller position sizes. But right now, NVDX, I mean, it's a sad chart. We're not even at a million in volume. So if I want a derivative, NVDL is going to have to be what I choose. That's okay. I think uh, we're, we're continuing to kind of fail this 899 area. I might be a little bit late on my entry in this, but I do like this continued move to the downside here, NVDX, NVDL. Sorry, if we break decisively above this 4120, I'll be up. We're going to be trying to get involved at like 4115. We're going to keep this very tight, take a few more shares because you're going to be um, getting a little bit less movement. This is about a $40 name. So I think it's just important for me to practice trading different kinds of things. Why I like this level, oh, we already got filled. Why I like this level is because I like this, this kind of bottom earlier that we had around that 4120 area, which is again, more or less that 899.50 on NVDA. So if NVIDIA um, decisively kind of breaks out of that range and into the 900s, I'm gonna have to leave NVDL. Profit taking areas I like, I'm gonna set some for that 4108, I think. Um, and then just because it's kind of around that 4105, but I don't want to take exactly 4105. And then we're going to kind of see where we go from there. I think other areas I like are for sure going to be that just shy of 41, so like 4097, and then saving a piece for Ladream at 4080, 4083, that whole area. So that's what I'll be eyeing. But yeah, I have to admit, I did take some L's on AMD, uh, as was mentioned there. Yeah, that's, you know what? Honestly, I'm happy with this because I got out where I wanted to leave. We got into that earlier support area and then broke above here around that 183.80s. So I dipped, I added, because initially we were rejecting that VWAP beautifully, so I did add a little bit here. But then uh, th th this beautiful rejection became a nightmare. So I had to make my exempt, and, and that's okay. You gotta, you gotta roll with what the, um, the charts give you. No one to hold them, no one to fold them, no one to walk away, no one to run. And in this case, we did, we did run, but we ran within reason. So that's what matters. Happy I got out where I did and just about learning from everything. Yeah, thank you so much, Kyle Burdett, as well, uh, mentioning some, you know, lower risk names that are that are good opportunities here, especially as, like I said, I am trying to uh, go live very soon once I set some time aside to do the compliance test. But I mean, yeah, like look at this, this Starbucks is a really nice move here, that short of 9140, which I really should have taken. I just don't have my eye on. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see if we, if we bounce back at 9105. I might take the long here. I do think, you know, ranges exist for a reason. There is a range there. Speaking of ranges, Meta, are you gonna keep doing this? Cause I might actually, oh, I just typed NVIDIA. Someone has NVIDIA on the brain. This Meta is kind of continuing to range here at this 490. Now, the thing is too, is we're getting kind of slightly lower highs, which concerns me. I don't know if we'll get this 491 again. Looks like that 490, 60, 490, 70 is kind of our new top. But I mean, I can play with that. If that's all you're gonna give me, Meta, I can I can play with that. So we're gonna actually set something here for just above 490s, and we're gonna have it with really small size, and we're gonna see what we get because I'm trying to take more opportunities of, of, of areas I like. NVIDIA getting into a dicey area, so NVDL might not be an NVDW for me. I think we might be taking an NVDL 
on um, this NVIDIA long ETF. So that might actually be, or not ETF, I guess, um, vehicle. So I think that, that might be my, my time to leave. We're, we're still below this, this 4120 area that I like. So, or not that I like, but that was kind of my stop level. So if we stay below here, I'm cool. But NVIDIA is a really volatile name. And honestly, I feel like, at least in my experience, and maybe that's just because I am a little bit more skittish as a trader, which I am trying to work on, I find NVDL to even be a little fast moving. So as long as we stay below here, I will be staying in the trade. You have entered the Micron long. I have entered uh, a little bit of Micron there, but uh, might have been might have been too uh, might have been a little early there um, as well. But uh, I am watching this. Uh, price is really starting to compress here on the Google, um, so uh, I think that uh, just uh, maybe maybe not too long before we potentially pick a, pick a bit of a direction here. Um, but I don't know. We could just go sideways for the rest of the day. We I kind of pointed out how. Um, how uh, Google has done that over and over again uh, a little bit uh, over time. So yeah, my, uh, uh, Micron coming back to the downside here. So I will kind of stop out of this one. If, uh, if it kind of flushes a little bit too much, I will get out of the way as we did break that trend to the, down, uh, to the upside and we're flushing back in uh, it potentially. Um, I was looking for maybe some, maybe a little bit of a base, and there it goes right there. So I do, do get stopped out right there of the micron uh, on that uh, on that flush to the downside. So um, kind of uh, as soon as it breaks that uh, that 30, I'm like, all right, well I do want a piece out of that one right there. I'll give it some more time, maybe some some more uh, uh, need some more time to maybe kind of consolidate because I don't want to be fighting the trend if it's if the trend is aggressive to the downside here. So. Uh, a little bit of a, of a quick uh, quick paper cut, just uh, testing that out. But uh, yeah, it seems like it is a little heavier to the downside there. It's consolidation not really holding up and slamming right back to the downside. So now that we've consolidated and we're getting a little weak underneath this VWAP, which happens to be underneath that 125 as well, I definitely don't want to be long. And uh, yeah, I guess I was willing to pay a little bit for, for, that, for confirmation of that information right there um, below VWAP. So maybe if we kind of push and uh, we get a little bit of strength, I'll be looking to short some pops there on, uh, on Micron as uh, this was apparently the pop that I could have should have shorted, shorted but uh, it didn't really pop as much as I was looking for there. But uh, coming into the downside, hey, there comes Google as well. You can see the, the, the flushes of, uh, of red to the downside. Oh boy, are we teleporting? Is something happening right now? Because oh, yeah, uh, that was a little, uh, somebody's like, all right, well, we're going to sell a little bit of everything right now, a uh, basket. Uh, but yeah, let's see if Apple caught a bit of a, a, bit of a sell there as well. Um, Apple, not really. Apple doing its own thing. Um, let's check softy, softy, fresh lows. So softy catching a bit of a sell. Google, we kind of we're watching that. Goog, looking the same. Amazon, Amazon near its lows as well. So oh boy, does that short from those 183s uh, look pretty good on top of that 180? So uh, that's been working out quite well. Let's take a quick look at Tesla. Tesla uh, rejecting VWAP. Okay, so. It's interesting. Sometimes VWAP respects quite well. Sometimes it doesn't. Today seems like one of those days that uh, VWAP is holding its own on uh, on Tesla there. So uh, we'll stay we'll stay a little bit more patient to see if this comes in uh, to any of these previous levels. I like that 173 as well. If we can get above that, uh, maybe potentially something there on Tesla. Uh, as well. Greg Moore saying Tesla short. Yeah, off of the VWAP, I think that Tesla short looks great because like, look, just more of the same. Off of the open, you can't really get past VWAP. VWAP has some selling. The selling accelerates, breaks the low, and then you kind of get this this uh, this uh, aggressive sell all the way into 170s, catch a bit of a bid back into 173, which happens to be a little bit of a level as well. And then at confluences with VWAP and VWAP uh, acting as a bit of a bit of a resistance as of right now on Tesla. So uh, let's see what we do with that 173 on Tesla. But good luck on that short. 
Greg Moore seems like off of those 173s and off of that, uh, that morning push, the short has definitely paid uh, a lot of the a lot of the participants, uh, especially especially on Tesla. There, uh, Micron still chopping around sideways. So, uh, like I said, I'll stay a little patient. Don't want to pay too much for the information. I think I've paid enough on that initial test. I'll, I'll be a little patient to kind of let it show me if it's going to do what I'm looking for. If not, that's perfectly fine as well. Just move on to the next trade there. But uh, let me know in the chat what you guys are trading that short on Micron. Oh boy, was that nice. The little flat break of that 125, but it doesn't get too, too far there, right? It goes about 124 and some change. So you, if, you're, if you're trading this name, I think, uh, well, I would, I would be looking for something a little bit more than one point if we're failing off that 127, maybe a revisit of this 122s, 123s. But uh, yeah, let's see what Micron has in store for us. If we're gonna hold in and around this level, reclaim V off reclaim 125 i think uh potential long might be in store but if not i have no idea then uh those are my if thens for that specific scenario if it happens to set up like that what do you got going on yeah no i think there's um there's definitely that um that google flash was really nice i couldn't see anything on that forum for google but yeah also shout out to uh the king of draft kings over there his name is sean he um is uh Short 45 49 on DraftKings, so uh, nice look there on this one. Yeah, and I mean, if anyone is not aware, that is the, the short right now. It and honestly, that was like that's a really nice entry, too, because that was kind of the top area of this earlier range. Then we followed the viciousness on DraftKings. That's how a lot of these um, names in the queues kind of shaped up, too, right? So, in video, we kind of had this consolidation, then we sold off. There, there were quite a few names that kind of had that uh, look and kind of came to fruition in that way there, uh, NVDA, one of them as well. Yeah, this Tesla short, I was also kind of tempted to get involved in. And I say that because this is an area I drew it earlier. Look at how we're rejecting this earlier area. This was an area we struggled with in the morning. So you know what, I'm gonna stop yapping about it. I'm gonna take this. I'm not gonna take a huge position. We're gonna take this short um, as we kind of reject this level. Also happens to be rejection of the 90 MA. And I do like, A, I like that level in general. B, I like the confluence we have there. I'm going to be watching to see what we do. I want to take some profit at this 17160, but also we didn't, that was a small position to begin with, and we didn't get everything filled here. So if I don't get everything filled here, I will not really have any room to, to run and so, to deposit some shares as we go. Also, Meta, I should be getting filled around here. This is, I think, where I had my profit taker set. I was really happy with this trade. Uh, honestly, I got kind of involved at the base here. Of, of this range, trying to take out about 50 pennies with a smaller position size. There we go, we are filled, I'm happy. I did have a couple L's here. As I was saying earlier, it was not my best trading day. I find for whatever reason on, on Mondays, I always struggle a little bit. And I think, you know, maybe it's like, it's the first day of, of the week and, and my brain needs a reset. I don't know, maybe I'm just sleeping too much in the weekend and it's wiping me out uh, in terms of my trading brain. But you know what, that's all right. And I, like, I always do find that I need that Monday to kind of remember, hey, this is your strategy, this is how you like to trade, and then kind of get back into it and, and get the feel for it again, right? So, I, honestly, we had a couple winners here. Very positive on, on Microsoft, very much positive on Meta as well. So, please just punch with that. Try to focus on, on the positive here. Uh, not even, not, like, honestly, that, that kind of ended up being a pun, which it wasn't supposed to be, but it, just trying to focus on you know, on the upside, both in, in the account and also in terms of what I'm learning. You know, as Sharif said, you either lose or you learn. And in this, or sorry, you win or you learn. <laughs> um, and you lose while you learn or learn while you lose. So yep. that also works. But yeah, I think in this case, we did a lot of learning today. I'll put it that way. But learning also matters. So I can't, I can't be too pressed about that. Tesla, if we break above this earlier area of that 172.34, which was a, a pretty interesting area for earlier. Look where we had this doji. Break above there. I'm outie. It's where I'm going to have to cut off this trade because Tesla, you have to keep it on a very tight leash. You have to make sure you have that. that you can't let it full self-drive, okay? Because Tesla <laughs> will if you do. You have to make sure you have your foot on the brake pedal at all times in case of a crash. Also, Meta, I might have gotten out of this a little too earlier, early, but I mean, this range kind of still coming to fruition here. I should have maybe taken this short, but I think because we're up on the day, I'd rather take this range basically at, at the bottom. So if you come back into that 490 and hold, I'll take this again, maybe with a few more shares now that I, I feel a little bit more confident in how this range is, is holding up. Right now, basically flat on Tesla, no complaints, no stressful on Tesla, which is I think always honestly, that, that's kind of the best law. 
yeah. when you could say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, what else are you kind of looking at? Like, we have 15 minutes left. I can't believe. Yeah, it's just, uh, time, time, time is definitely flying there. Um, I, I'm watching that micron. Micron kind of coming right back in. So it did, it did make some fresh lows there. So uh, we were selling to the downside, and uh, the first area, uh, potentially the first consolidation that we had, or the second consolidation that we had on the way up, just a little bit, quick little pullback, was in and around this 124 to 123 halves. So I'm watching that. Uh, that here on Micron as that 124 comes right in. So let me pull up the tape for you guys. Um, MU. Okay, so that's 124. Let's see if there's any size at the level, anything crazy going on there um, uh, for a potential look on Micron. But uh, we kind of talk about that trend continuing, and that trend is definitely continuing to the downside here. Uh, do I want to punch short? I guess I'm, I was a little tempted. I was just like, I can take this quick consolidation break down there, but uh, I'll, I'll be a little bit more patient. I think there might be better opportunities uh, for the short on a, on, a, on a little bit of a pop. I don't necessarily want to be chasing the move down at, uh, at like 2 o'clock, right? Wow, it's almost 2 o'clock. You're right. Time is, time is definitely flying. Um, uh, but uh, with, the cra with the craziness that we've had off of the open, pretty much sideways for most of the day here, um, with only about two hours left, it seems like Google is probably going to do or maybe likely going to do that, uh, that dance where it just kind of goes sideways for majority of the day there. But Micron, I'm looking for a potential bounce. Maybe it'll be there. I tried that one, the long once, once uh, uh, on this little pull, but it uh, wasn't necessarily there. I'll be a little bit more patient. I'll wait for the turn to actually come in. If it'll come in, maybe we consolidate a little bit higher. Maybe we take a couple of shots at VWAP or some of these previous levels here at that 124, 90s, 125s-ish level on Micron. So that's kind of all I really have on watch. Um, going into the going into the close, I guess I did have uh, I, I did I guess I did have Reddit and XOM kind of uh, on watch today as well. XOM, let's see what oil has done today. So uh, let's take this VWAP out of the way. Um, so you see that nice little nice little strength going into the end of the end of the previous week there on XOM. So that's kind of what I was looking for, uh, looking for a potential continuation. You dip, uh, you dip quite aggressively off of the open, but then eventually you do reclaim those uh, those closing prices from the end of last week, and we've been trending up for about half a point since then. Sixteen halves, excuse me, sixteen and some change, all the way to seventeens on XOM. So. XOM quite strong uh, on the day after the little dip off the 115, 117s coming into play there. And then the other one obviously was Reddit, RDDT. Uh, I was looking for a continuation, but I was also I did also also mention that seven uh, that 47 price uh, was the opening price. So I was like, if the bid holds uh, uh, 47s or 46s look for that reclaim back uh, or look for a push back towards some of those highs. But as you can see, it's clearly the opposite. So the opposite of what I was looking for is happening. 147 doesn't hold. 147 actually acts as a resistance. So it's, you have a key level acting as a bit of resistance here. 47, the IPO opening price. Now you got to remember that Reddit IPO has been long awaited. Right? Been waiting for this one for quite some time, so a lot of people definitely interested in the name, and uh, just that amount of information has uh, is enough for me to be interested in what we do with that opening IPO price at that 47. So as of today, right now we are trading below that on top of that on top of that 45. Now, if I remember correctly, um, 45 had a pretty strong bidder on Reddit. Let's see if uh, Buddy is back. At that, uh, at that 45. So let's take a quick look at Reddit. Let me pull up the tape. It does trade on the NICE. Oh boy. Um, let's see. No real size at that 45. Yeah, it's it's a little interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, let's take a quick look. Nothing really there at that 45 as of right now. Um, but maybe something will show up the closer we get. But I'll be watching that 45 just to see what. Reddit will do with that 45. So if we continue to hold that 45, maybe potentially uh, a trade there. But as of right now, we're trading below the, the, the IPO opening price. We faded off of 75. We failed to follow through 75. We broke back below 50. And now we're holding 45s on a chart 
that is building into the lows. So I think that's definitely an interesting look. Um, I don't have shares borrowed just yet, but uh, maybe I should get on that if that shelf uh, is looking like it's going to break. But like I said, I'll stay a little patient. I'll give it some more time, some more room. But that 47, oh boy, was that a place to be involved uh, just underneath VWAP as well. So you had that confluence a little bit later on in the day. And we talk about how uh, the moves can be less aggressive. Look at that first time it, it breaks through that 47, very aggressive to the downside holds at 45 and on, on the rebid, can't even get to that 47 and the selling comes in a little bit more methodically off of that 47 back into that 45 on Reddit. So yeah, definitely uh, lots of opportunity on the day depending on where and how you're looking at some of these names and how your trade plan is poised relative to some of the action that we've been getting here. But uh, yeah, let me know in the chat where you guys have been trading. We're pretty much, uh, pretty much coming to a close here for the midday session here. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, 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 got a little bit of information, some value off the tidbit on uh, uh, trading the open as uh, Adara pretty much carried the lesson. I, did, I didn't necessarily have the lesson, but uh, going forward uh, this week, I'll definitely have the lesson beforehand and kind of uh, uh, be more prepared to, to talk about uh, certain things, but got a little lucky. What the lesson is on uh, is, was reflected in some of the trades that we took right off of the open with the Intel and the Google opening drive, that volatility, that volume coming in, that distinct direction off of the open. Doesn't necessarily happen very often, but seems like today was the day on some of these names to start off the week on a very strong, uh, hard push to the upside on, uh, on a lot of these chip names as well as Google and uh, tech names as well. So catching a bit of a pullback quite decently, maybe a bit of a pullback. Oh boy, we're, we're back below opening prices for, for, a, for a lot of these uh, tickers there. I hear uh, Sean talking about meta. Are you still short on that, on that meta, Sean? Where's the short? Wow, 497. Wow. 35. 497. 35. 497.35. Yeah. So you basically clipped the highs by two pennies. Uh, Woo. It was by six. Damn, by six pennies. All right, all right. Yeah, just a couple, couple pennies here and there, but solid, solid, solid snipe there by Sean off, of, off those meta highs and uh, still holding about seven points in the money. Oh boy, is that wild. That's a, that's a wild. Sniper, sniper, yes, yeah, sniping there. Uh, for that trade, random shout out to Dora, the Explorer. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think one two that I, I want to take a look at. This is, of course, not my name, especially at this desk today. But Andre Bourgeois asking for my thoughts on Amazon. So there are some levels I do I do want to kind of talk about here, and one of them is going to be. And I actually should have shorted this when I noticed it, but I didn't because I find. Amazon, for whatever reason, it does not matter how nice a level looks. This could be paranoia, but also when a thing happens enough time, it starts to feel real. But anyways, no matter how, how good a setup on Amazon looks, whenever I get involved, Amazon is like, nah, uh, and goes the opposite direction. That being said, this short I really should have taken because that was a cool 30 penny short here off that 180, 30 area. Why I like that area is because look at that previous area of support that became resistance here at 180, 30. Then the base of the area I was looking at was that 180.05 because that was an earlier area we had a bit of a pop. I mean, if you look at the wicks on Amazon, Amazon's really behaving very well there. Um, you know, like swinging from vine to vine here, that 180.30, 180.05 area gives you about 25 penny range. I think it's a nice look. Also, that 180.95, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, 180.95 area earlier, massive area resistance. We try to have the topping tail candle into VWAP. Amazon's like, nah, nah, nah. the sell off continues. So I think there are some clear areas. The other area I drew in this would, I think Amazon would have to be uh, climbing pretty hard to get back up in this <laughs> level, uh, to get back into this Amazon. Uh, but we had that nice. pre market low of one. No, I guess not pre-market low, but pre-market base of that 180, 130 area. That was a nice area earlier. If Amazon can get back in there, I think that could be a nice look. But right now, I think there is certainly something pretty fascinating about that 180.05 into 180.30. The other, to me, I think the range of the day that I only took the once I'm a little upset at myself for, this meta range. Yeah, I was very happy. My, my, I feel like, you know, my, I was very happy my order was met uh, in meta because we did have that, that range for a while here, 490 into that 490.50. I think you even could have probably taken it 490.70s into that 491. But I was just, meta, because of the, the spread being what it is, it, you know, the, you do have that spread uh, to worry about there in meta. I did want to be cognizant of that, and that's why I was a little bit more cautious. Happy I took my, my 50 pennies. 
please just punch on that. This is a name though I should have been a little bit more aggressive on. But honestly, again, shout out to Sean for taking pretty much, yeah, literally yeah, top, top point here, 497.35 to the downside um, into that. Uh, the lowest we got here was 488. So yeah, congrats there to Sean. Um, Killer Katina, as Sharif calls him uh, sometimes. So yeah, nice yeah, look yeah. there. You're welcome, Andre. Hopefully that, that read helps. That was kind of, yeah, I think Amazon, there are certainly some opportunities to play there for sure. AMD kind of coming back. You know, Obi uh, said it best here. I think that AMD has been kind of stagnant around VWAP. There were some opportunities there. I was just not the person to play them correctly. Uh, I think there is sort of this top here of 184.30 coming back into that, that VWAP. And then if you want to give it even more room, coming into 183. I think to me, there are some opportunities there. But I think you have to be a lot faster, a lot scalpier, and a, definitely a better trader than I am. I'm definitely still learning. Um, also, just because I just elbowed Trenda, the tick of the trading turtle. Here she is. Shout out to her. Some people mentioning the turtle in the chat there as well. But yeah, so uh, this was this was not a trending ticker, that is for sure. Uh, but I think there were probably some scalp opportunities there. Anything else you're looking at? What? I can't believe we're three minutes left. What, what's uh, what's her name? Trenda Ticker. Trenda Ticker, the trading turtle. She was named by Ramin. Trend Trenda Ticker. The trading turtle. The trading tur yeah. turtle. Okay, so when she's around, you're telling me that there's a higher probability of trends happening. Well, she's always kind of around. So okay, I think, okay, okay. I think she's just like. I guess that you know how they have the bears and the bulls for bears right. and bullishness. Yeah, yeah. I think she's That's just like asking. trending tickers in general. Okay, all right. So we got a we got a. Uh, what would you say her name was? Trendla? Trend. I think it's trying to take out the trading turtle. Okay, all right, all right. A little, yeah. little bit of a little bit of a tongue tr tongue twister there. I can't even say tongue twist. But um, yeah. So uh, okay. So. Let's, uh, let's trend a little bit more to the downside here for these shorts. Um, but uh, yeah, let, let's see. I'm, see, Google's kind of just just in just trading sideways right there. So I, I am probably going to kind of time out of this ticker uh, uh, soon enough. Uh, if it doesn't really go anywhere, we we talk about how uh, it's done this a few few times in the past couple of weeks, where it just very strong either to whoa what's happening Reddit to the downside mm -hmm. 45 just broke uh, just broke through that 45 quite aggressively 30 pennies to the downside if you guys were watching uh, that happened right now um, and uh, maybe a little bit of a flush that 45 might be a little interesting we talk about that level uh, there was a level at that 45 um, uh, initially so uh, off of the IPO and now we're trading below it so first uh, fresh lows on Reddit, it would seem, let's take a quick look at what those pre-market lows were a few days ago. Are we trading below those? I think it was 44.20. Uh, might have been okay. So 44.20. So 44.20s. So fresh lows on the day, but not not fresh all-time lows just yet on Reddit. As Reddit all-time lows is uh, in and around that 44.20. That happened to be a few days ago. If you look at the pre-market session, it did have some RVOL when we were trading uh, in and around some of those prices. There, I'll pull up the chart so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, so uh, 4420s was the lower in and around here. Day one IPO, uh, some 5,000 lots, as I remember, at that 45 on the initial day. Size kind of shows up the second day and holds a little bit higher. And today, we are trading well below that, uh, that price. And take a look at that quadunk to the downside happening right now on Reddit. Let's see, I gotta borrow some shares because uh, if this pops and drops and makes, uh, makes a little uh, continuation on this trend, I do wanna be involved now that uh, we've traded back below that IPO price of 47 and now we're trading back below uh, where we saw that 5,000 lots on that initial day at that 45. Uh, so maybe that support could have turned into resistance, but that's all we got for you guys here uh, with the midday show. Yeah, it is 2 p.m. as uh, four LATZ said in the chat, don't fight the turtle, don't fight the trend, and definitely don't fight going over to the big desk right now. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. See you guys. Hey, guys. Yeah, happy Monday, Easter Monday afternoon. Uh, Two o'clock, a couple hours left here as we get going into, um, back to, let's be honest, kind of a negative day here. As far as the overall market is concerned, I was just noting a couple of things. Uh, we had that uh, inflation data 